Uh, welcome to the Board of Selectmen's meeting, uh, May 8th, 2017. Uh, please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance and remain standing for a moment of silence for John Jacob and John Young, who recently passed away. Mr. Jacob was a lifelong Abington resident and served the town of Abington by being on many boards and commissions over the years, including the Finance Committee, the Personnel Board, the Commission on Disabilities and Capital Planning Committee, and the Board of Water Commissioners. Mr. Young is the father of the Council on Aging Director, and he contributed his personal time to Veterans Administration, assisting disabled veterans and sharing his knowledge of computing and electronics while serving the town of Abington by volunteering numerous hours of the Ab at the Abington Senior Center. Mr. Jacob and Mr. Young will be deeply missed by their loving family and friends. Thank you. I pledge, pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Um, as is our tradition, we might have some you have announcements for upcoming events around town. Does uh, <laughs> everybody's <laughs> passing the buck down? But uh, uh, I Tom, think the Tom, rookie like should read it. Alex. Yes, I do. The Abington Garden Club. Um, Hummingbird Magic will be the topic of discussion on Monday, May 15th, with Gwen Manning showing photos, presentation, present, presenting stories and fun facts about hummingbirds. Um, the meeting will begin at 12 p.m. with a luncheon to follow, presented presentation at the um, Parish Hall, United Church of Christ, up on Route 18. And also the annual plant sale will be held at Butterfly Park on Central Street, Saturday, May 20th. From 10 to 2, the sale includes annuals and perennials and a bake table. Thank you. Andrew? Oh, that would be nice. Uh, ride the Wave, the 18th annual duck race, will be held Saturday, May 13th, 2017, at the Beaverbrook Playground at 1 o'clock. If you would like to participate in this fun event, you may purchase ducks for $5 <coughs> each. Proceeds go toward the music programs in the Abington Public Schools, and this is sponsored by the Abington Music Parents Association and Friends of Music. And uh, I think maybe you can just show up that day and purchase um, ducks, or you can do it in advance if you get one of these flyers. You can, you can I would imagine are available here yeah. and other places. They're available the day of the uh, exciting race. The race as well. Yeah. Mr. Manning? Um, the U.S. Post Office and the Abingdon Food Pantry are team, teaming up together to do a Abingdon Postal Pickup this Saturday, May 13th. Um, participating in the Stamp Out for Hunger is easy. Simply leave your non-perishable food items such as canned goods, cereals, pasta, rice, juice boxes, uh, shelf-stable milk, please no glass items next to your mailbox before your regularly scheduled mail delivery on Saturday. Your UPS letter carrier will do the rest. Please. Uh, participate and thank you for your support and donations for food. Thank you. Um, I have one other announcement. Actually, I don't have an announcement. Someone from the audience would like to make a special announcement. Um, uh, Michelle Christian, would you like to come up to the microphone and uh, state your name and address, please? Good evening. My name is Michelle Christian, 222 High Street. Um, I'm a member of the Abington Celebrates Committee. I'm here to talk to you tonight about the Abington Celebrates Hometown Cooking Cookbook Project. After six weeks of publicizing and collecting recipes from the community, I'm happy to say that we are in the final push of phase one of this project. We have exceeded our goal of 100 recipes with still a week to go. Folks around town have sent in amazing recipes as well as some great stories to go along with them. Uh, some of the recipes included heartfelt tributes, some funny notes and a little history behind them, and I know everyone will enjoy reading them. Over the next month, which will be phase two, we'll be compiling recipes <clears throat> and preparing the cover of the book, which will be done by Doug Elwick. We are on target for the book to go into production over the summer, and hopefully it will be ready for, for publication and sale at the very last summer concert, and I believe we will meet that goal. In the meantime, if anyone still wants to submit a recipe, or two, they can do so at Abington Celebrates Food at gmail.com or mail them to Abington Celebrates, 500 Glenowitz Way, Abington. We would like to have them in no later than May 15th. So, and finally, one of the things we've done to help publicize the cookbook is to do a test kitchen. 
And so tonight, and we, we do this test kitchen and do samples and post them on Facebook. So last night in the test kitchen, we did pumpkin frosted, what do we do? Frosted pumpkin squares. And I did hear it was someone's birthday, so he gets first choice from the test kitchen, Mr. Burbine. Oh. <laughs> not my birthday, not my birthday. Tomorrow. The recipe, oh, tomorrow. Uh, the recipe was sent in by uh, Jen Sullivan, and I wanted to share these with you tonight. You get first pick. Bob, I know your eyes lit up. No, I, I don't know anything about that. So. It's, my I'm hungry. it's my sister's recipe, so I've had met, yeah. have them many oh, times, so oh, you guys can oh. have them first. It's actually probably, your, probably your mother's, mother's recipe. recipe. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> We should let the audience have them first. Oh. <laughs> I, I already have my share. <laughs> How many did you have? No, I didn't say How many did you I have? have one. Thank you. They're really good. Oh, it's a double. That's all. Thank you. Thank you. Just one. Ball. That's all. <laughs> it's one. <laughs> It's the biggest one in the box, but this one. No, just the yeah. They have a napkin. Please. Small one. Talk. Yeah, this one. <laughs> Small. <laughs> napkin, please. Thank you. Michelle. Thank you. Thank you. Napkin. Yep. <laughs> yep. Please. <laughs> Thank you. All right, 635, I believe we have a public appointment. Uh, Mr. Salam, Salam Zaidan. Zaidan. Uh, I'm going to read the public, it's a public hearing, so I'm going to read the notice. Uh, the Board of Selectmen will hold a public hearing on Monday, May 8, 2017 at 635 in the Carter Hearing Room, 500 Glenowitz Way on the application of Salam Zaydan for a commercial garage license and Class 2 license, 225 Brockton Ave, uh, former Chairman Maureen Jansen. I'll entertain a motion to op open the hearing. Motion to open the hearing. Second. Motion is made and second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, public hearing. is. Mr. Zaydan here. Come on up to the phone, please. If you'd like. I appreciate it. That's a lot of stuff. Yep. Good evening. Welcome. Thank you. Can you explain a little bit about what your um, intention is? <coughs> My intention is to run um, a garage. Yep. Uh, it's gas station, garage, convenience store, propane, and car sales. Okay. Um, we just received a notice today. Actually, I don't even know if anybody got to see it until tonight, till right now. But we received from our inspectional service, our building commission, uh, building commissioner, and our zoning enforcement agent, with some uh, some concerns. I guess you could say mostly about parking. I think, and some other concerns. Um, I think we also have in our packet, which is a big packet actually for the. Uh, from the police chief, he has concerns also about uh, parking a number of businesses, uh, number of employees these two businesses will have. Now you speak about um, propane, there's a U-Haul rental place there. Um, now you, you are just gonna be running, you're just gonna be operating the garage or you're operating everything? I'm operating, I'm the manager for everything. Manager for everything. Manager. Yeah. Is there a store there too? Yes, it's a there convenient. Is a store. Okay. Um, any questions from the board? So you're the manager? Um, partner and manager. Who owns the property? Uh, Eli Saad. Is he the landlord? He's the landlord. So do you have a lease or do you own? Lease. You have a lease. Because we don't have a copy of that lease. Um, I believe I submitted it with my paperwork. Yes. To the okay. there is a, the lease was submitted, yes. Oh, it was. Okay. Yes. Not, it wasn't I'm sorry. Package. Yes. Have you seen this? You probably haven't seen this. I have not seen it. I have yeah. uh, had the pleasure of meeting the building inspector. This morning. Uh, this morning. This morning, he's, yeah. Yes. Yeah. And we discussed the parking situation. He had indicated that in the middle where the gas gets delivered that there shouldn't be any cars, and I told him that would be the case, that there wouldn't be any cars there. He asked me where I would leave the cars, and I explained to him exactly where they would go. We discussed the U-Haul rentals, upon which I... Uh, indicated to him that I will only have two U-Haul trucks at all times on the property. Transient ones will be picked up within 24 hours. He's recommending a, uh, a scale site plan. 
I, I don't feel that is necessary, to be honest with you. I mean, we have more than ample place, and in the future, I'm thinking about paving the side of the building also to accommodate the cars. But at, at the present time, we have <coughs> enough to carry a small operation of car sales. Have uh, there's only one car there at a time for employees, the two your halls, and the rest is parking. But I, I think his concern is you're looking for sale of 20 cars, which he doesn't, just based on his, what I've seen today, he doesn't think you can fit 20 cars there to sell, along with all the other parking spaces you need for employees, for the commercial ISB. garage, that sort of thing. That's up to Mr. He's Kendall. my partner, Mohammed. Yeah. So my name is Mohammed Skander. I'm with both partners in there. Yeah. Um, we are not opposed to have a site plan and do all that. The only issue we have, we leased the property on February 6th. We got all the state permits. And for the last six weeks, we're waiting on the town officials to come and inspect. Uh, gone three, four weeks without anybody showing up. Promises tomorrow, today, noon, afternoon, and nobody showed up. The building inspector finally shows up this morning without telling us anything. Now we're walking in. They wanted to hand us this package to tell us what his recommendation is. So we really cannot afford to to go another month or two without starting operating the business. If we can, if you can <coughs> allow us to operate today, we will have the site plans. Promise, no later than a month from today. But we really need to start the business because we're paying rent. Mm -hmm. How are you going to run a gas station, used car business, uh, garage repair, and a convenience store and propane with one employee? No. Not, well, it's it's not one employee. It's only one right car, now, one right employee now, car. Yeah, right now, we're only running the gas and the, the propane. Okay. But in the future, we'll have more. But there is, it's a two-acre lot. It's. I it understand. Is, I'm very familiar with the lot, and just. Uh, uh, for your information, you said that in the future you're going to be paving. Make sure you go to Conservation of course, Commission before of course, you do that. Of and probably zoning to check on lot coverage. Correct. Not just paving. Correct. I mean, I own a number of businesses in different towns. We always follow the recommendations of the town. And before we, of course, spend any money, we need to know what's right and what's wrong in doing so. But at least we need to operate the convenience store and the garage for now. Uh, so how many um, how many used cars? Currently, we have no used cars. No, but what's the, the application is? But you're applying for 20 oh, cars no, for no. sale, five customer spaces, three employee spaces for a total of 28. That's what you're. That's what. That's on um, that, and then it looking for. Three cars to be repaired, three customer spaces, one employee, total number seven. So that's a total of 35. Mm -hmm. if, I, if I may say something, this same plan was granted before to the previous owners. So Which was I just, you know. This plan was denied with the previous owners. Yes. We asked them for this plan. This was not the same plan that they originally had. And just, just for clarification, uh, I recall that we were, uh, um, approved uh, after Mark Handel left and we did not renew his license. Somebody else came in and applied for a license to sell vehicles there, and we approved it. Um, but since then, that person has been evicted. Uh, has, yeah, I don't know the technicalities. Right. They've left. They, they've left. And leave. So there is no license to sell. Uh, there is no Class 2 license currently there. Just, I, uh, just a point of clarification on that. Um, my, my thought is I, I, I'm not comfortable issuing you a license tonight only because the building inspector he radically disagrees with what you think you can fit there as opposed to what he thinks can be there and recommends a site plan. I don't know how long it would take you to get a site plan, but my thought is you get a site plan, you sit down with the building inspector, get things worked out with him. I we think the, poli the police chief had a couple of issues as well. <coughs> I think you probably would want to meet with him, and then we could continue this hearing for 
You could do it in two weeks. We meet again in two weeks, and if it's all okay, that would be great. But can we at least operate yeah. the other businesses? Other businesses, like meaning the convenience store. I we mean, don't, we don't have a license. That's not, that's not, that's not before us tonight. So, oh, uh, yes. what about the garage? I mean, the garage doesn't require correct as many cars to be there. So for the, I, I wouldn't be comfortable doing that only because we've been in this position before where the place starts to expand and we don't know who's operating. The car, the car sales, we can wait for the next hearing and we'll have the plot plan. But at least we need to operate the other parts because... Well, we you can certainly operate the convenience store, I would imagine, right? Yes, that's the not... The gas that, and the yeah, convenience store. The convenience store, store isn't subject and the to... Uh, yeah, isn't the garage is permanent. tied into this parking yeah, so too, it, yeah. situation. I would rather have a certified plot plan. Everyone else has to present a certified plot plan. No, I understand, but if there is no car sales, so you don't think there is enough spaces to park the garage, cars for the garage? I mean, you I might, thought you might be boxing yourself in if you do that, only because you're going to be taking up spots <coughs> for the garage. That I, I just think it, it, you've I, presented it as one package together. There's right? nobody look at coming it. in for the garage right now. But if we get an oil change, I would like to be able to well, do it. Well, and the other thing is, it's not just parking that he has issues with. It's a fire escape. There's uh, four 55-gallon drums around there. Um, fire extinguishers missing, other things. You know, it's just, it, it's not ready to go. Here's the receipt for the fire extinguisher. We bought them today and we put them in, but if we knew that before, we would have done all I, that. I understand that, but uh, my preference would be to wait. If you can get a if you can get a, uh, a site plan together in two weeks, I don't know if you can do that, but if you can, then I'd certainly be willing to continue it for two weeks and have you come back at that point in time. And if everything is okay, then you'd be okay to go. Then we appreciate your time. Thank you. So oh. we can operate the, oh. the, the We haven't voted on anything yet, so no. hold on a second. Uh, any board members have anything else to add, Tom? Or, well, I, I, I'm, I'm unfamiliar with the ability to uh, partially allow them to do anything or nothing at all, or whether or not they're allowed well, they're to They're applying do for it. two different licenses, correct? Right. So they are pl applying correct. for a repair license in their class two, which is the sales of vehicles. Right. So, so we're not going to approve the sale of vehicles because there's too much discussion and question about the property size and valid validity of the number of cars that you could put. But is there is there a plausibility of approving the other one? That is that possible? Okay. The class two license for if somebody makes operating a, in the garage. If somebody if, we, if somebody makes a motion, you okay. know what, what they're applying for um, vehicles on that three <coughs> repair cars, three customer spaces, one employee space for a total of seven spaces. I would just re uh, remind you it is a public hearing though, so before you uh, take a motion on um, yeah. approving any license that you. Uh, Sure that anybody has anything to say yep, there. Absolutely. Okay. Um, so, I will, does anybody in the audience have anything to add to this, or any questions or concerns? All right. So, I will take a motion to uh, to close the hearing. So moved. Second. Motion to <coughs> second to close the hearing. Any further discussion? All in favor of closing the hearing. Aye. 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 Uh, unanimous. Do we have any motions at all? Is is I'm I'm asking a question more than I'm asking for a motion right now. Is is there a viability of allowing one of one of the two, which is the operate the repair garage, uh, while we wait for the other on site um, or, or the site plan, so that we can validate whether or not they could operate a, a class two used car lot or car sale lot um, to make this a, a operation move as a ongoing business right now until they get the rest of it done. Is that plausible? Has that done, been no, done before? Yeah, it's very plausible to take each license separately, yes. Okay. I would just uh, um, make sure that if you're going to do that, that you would uh, uh, do so, uh, that you would make sure your motions, like if you're going to continue uh, the portion of the hearing for the class two, for instance, if you're going to do that, that you continue that part of the hearing until your next meeting so that it's very clear that yeah. that's still open right. for the 22nd and if that's what you choose to do. So, is that yeah. so that you don't close, again, so you've, if you... So I, I don't want to close the, the hearing. I want to give them the option of coming back in two weeks. Um, do you have something to add, sir? Yeah, I mean, it would help a lot if we can at least start the garage. The, trust me, I mean, we're not getting anybody. No. But if we can start now, in two weeks, when we come back with the plot plan, we can talk well, about to, the to be, car sales. To be perfectly honest with you, the part of the issue is, is 
not you folks, it's the property. There's been some a lot of problems up there at 225 Broadway. Right. And you've got to give us a chance to fix it. I mean, we are here committed to the property that's why and I said to it the was, I, That's why I said it wasn't you. It, it's the property itself. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, and as far as the store goes, that's not our, you know, I don't know anything about that. Uh, motions? I'm making a motion that we uh, allow the uh, re car repair operation to begin operations pending the outcome of the other license and leaving this meeting open for two weeks pending their return in two weeks to discuss the other license for used car sales so we have a motion for a commercial garage license and uh, class two license will be delayed for two weeks basically i best that's the best i can okay. word it we have a motion do i have a second Excuse i'll me. second that yeah. all right we have a motion and a second any further discussion yes yep um i might be in favor of doing this um providing that all these things are taken care of within the next two weeks I will be because care of. if they're not then I will certainly be voting against the uh, class two license I'll be taking and in his area here in uh, the blue area 55 gallon drums the fire escape must be certified and I don't even know what that means um, fire extinguishers all the sandwich board signs have to come down the dumpsters are located in what he thinks might be wetlands all those things have to be taken care of um, I don't know if you can do everything within sure. two weeks we will mm -hmm. okay. but the, the motion now is to issue the commercial right. garage license correct yes. right. mm -hmm. only the commercial garage license could I confirm that that also contains your standard conditions of all taxes and fees being up to date on the property? I I would amend my request. I would say that having making sure that all taxes <coughs> and any back taxes or current taxes are paid in full, provided before the license is issued. Any further discussion? Yeah. I, well, I just he did have a few more questions on here. Who's who's handling the U-Haul rentals? Is that you I, folks as well? I had one. <laughs> We had one U-Haul rental. Well, he he's, has a question down here. U-Haul for rentals and U-Haul transient drop-off vehicles. How many permanent rentals and how many spaces are you going to need for those? There is one van, small van, and one small truck. So there is right now two. Homes. So as part of your site plan, you should probably Correct. include that. Include Correct. That. And we will do that with the site plan and the number of spaces. That you, and he also put, you have a copy of this, but he also points out the fact you that will you will get a copy. We have don't a, have a copy. Yet. You should have some parking space no, dedicated just for the <laughs> propane fill. Sure. Okay. Right. All, all these things we're discussing were brought up today in inspectional services. Um, any other comments? I will uh, take a vote on the motion to approve a commercial garage license permit and then uh, delay the other class two license for two weeks. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? So it's unanimous. Okay? Thank you. Two weeks? Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, motion's already been closed, so that's closed, so that's all set. Close the hearing. So next order of business. Uh, 645 million. Jack Buckley, CPC recommendations for annual town meeting. Sorry. We have some members. The CPC is the Community Preservation Committee. Um, Mr. Buckley is present tonight. Welcome. Did you bring us desserts too? Or? I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, let me uh, let me find that for you, Jack. Hi, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Uh, Paul Mollica, the chairman, extends his regrets he couldn't be here he had a prior commitment so article six here i am article six so anyway here to discuss discuss article six um uh, first mr chairman congratulations on your re-election mr connelly on your election to the board thank you mr. Uh, looking Buster. at a very diverse board diverse <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's, that's the word that's the word i was, that wasn't <laughs> the word I was looking for very <laughs> polite um <laughs> the article, article six, which is the recommendation of the Community Preservation Committee, is a pretty straightforward article. Uh, the revenue number we used for uh, to base our recommendations on was the anticipated revenue for fiscal year 18, which is <coughs> the next fiscal year. The, the money that is currently being collected was collected February 1st and May 1st. 
uh, has to be certified by the Department of Revenue. And given their overburden at the Department of Revenue, maybe a while before we get that certified. But we expect that number to be certified in August or September. And uh, that number will be factored into next year's uh, budget, next year's recommendation. The number we came up, 369, 27, 24, was a number that was uh, recommended by the finance team and the, and the, the treasurer collector and, uh, and the accountant and, uh, and the chief assessor. As you can see, the number is 369, 27, 24. We are recommending <coughs> appropriations. We, the statute calls for the ability to have 5% for um, community preservation expenses, which includes advertising, uh, administrative assistant, and uh, whatever else the preservation expenses are. I doubt it will, and, and, and dues to the Community Preservation um, Coalition. I doubt that we'll use the 18,000, and uh, that money will then go into next year's um, appropriation, or next year's re revenue. We're recommending open space re and recreation in the category of open space and recreation uh, on the request of uh, John Stone, the Commissioner of the Department of Public Works, for playground work at both Arnold Park and Laidle Le Field, which includes equipment, fencing, uh, wood fiber, which is the base of the, uh, in, under the swings and, and uh, so forth, of 33,328.39. Uh, the Griffin Dairy Committee for Griffin Farm Park. Uh, after two or three meetings with the Griffin uh, Dairy Committee, uh, we're recommending $75,490 to begin the project at, uh, at, Griffin's, uh, farm, at Griffin Farm Park, which includes fencing on both uh, Patterson Street and Plymouth Street, trails from uh, the Patterson Street parking lot, a bridge over the intermittent stream, a sign, and, and gravels. <coughs> this will be the first phase of the uh, ongoing program, which will probably take two or three years at least to finish off the uh, recommendations of the Old Quality Planning Council and whatever other thoughts that the town might come up with or that committee might come up with. Under the category of historic resources, we're recommending $22,000 for repairs to the structure of the American Legion building. As all of you know, who have gone by there or looked at it. It's in dire need of um, some repair work. That is uh, classified by the Abingdon Historic Commission as a site of historical whatever, so that it qualifies under the category of historic resources. And we're also recommending a $35,000 allocation for an engineering study of the Island Grove Bridge. Before the railings fall off into the water, we thought it might be helpful if we uh, got a recommendation or, or a study to find out what the actual cost is going to be for repairing not only the railings, but there is some concern about underneath the bridge as to what might be involved there. It would probably be an expensive project, uh, which um, is a subject for further debate at a, at a later time. And because there were no projects brought forward for community housing, affordable housing, uh, the law, the statute requires <coughs> that we set aside 10% of the <coughs> anticipated revenue for um, reserve accounts that can be expended uh, in later years. But that money, $36,093, would be set aside uh, for um, uh, future use, future projects that would come forward for affordable housing or or in some cases rehabilitation or repair of existing senior citizen housing it has to fit the uh, category that uh, qualifies if you're repairing the envelope of a building for example and, and protecting the uh, integrity of the building then it would qualify um, normal everyday maintenance would not qualify so the total budget for um, that we're recommending is $219,957.39, which will let us bring forward a balance next, into next year of $149,69.85. So the next year's budget would incorporate the carry forward, the certified revenue for this current year, and then the anticipated revenue for the following year, which would be fiscal 19. And, uh, and whatever the 
state grant is will be added into that. So we're talking about a an amount of money some for ne not this current year, but for next year of somewhere around nine hundred thousand dollars for expenditures. We had a couple of projects that were uh, suggested. Uh, they were a bit expensive for this year's go round. One was the rubberizing of the track over here, which is about two hundred forty thousand dollars. That's the estimate we received. And another was a recommendation from John Stone for resodding Memorial Field, and um, those are worthwhile projects. Uh, I would anticipate that one or at least one, if not both, might be a, might be recommended next year. But um, that's where we are. Um, this year's process was a little compressed because we got a late start because of the election and the appointments and, uh, and next year so that we squeezed a lot of hearings and meetings into a, a short time frame next year we're asking that uh, people who have projects would bring forth would bring them forth in September to see if they are they meet the criteria and if they do uh, then come back with a full uh, <coughs> request in, in October and we'd have more time to discuss it with the proponents and more time to understand what uh, what they're looking for. Um, I think after this first year's um, program that there will be more people who are interested in different projects and I would expect there would be more projects that would come forth uh, for next year's cycle. So if you have any uh, questions, uh, we I, the estimates um, I spoke to were where I corresponded with uh, the treasurer collector and for the first half of um, this year's collection, which was February 1st, there were approximately $170,000. So that was off maybe by $5,000. So but we'll adjust whatever the final total is. We'll see what the certified revenue is that the Department of Revenue gives us and adjust anticipated revenue for uh, the future years. But it should be within, within $5,000. Just, to, just so people out there on TV land know, um, the community preservation money, um, if I, you correct me if I'm wrong, at least 10% has to go for open space or recreation. Right. Uh, at least 10% has to go for historic resources. Right. And 10% has to go for pu public housing? Affordable, affordable, affordable housing. housing. Now, I know <coughs> we're recommending saving 10% to, you know, to, to, to do that because you have to do 10%. Now, what kind of project could be used? Could that be used for? Housing? Yeah. Well, there was a, the executive director of, uh, of the Housing Authority retired in April, so we had a bit of a problem in getting uh, projects brought forward by the Housing Authority. But they could be used for, um, uh, <coughs> for, for windows if, in fact, it protected the, uh, the f building itself. It uh, could be used for, for roofing if, if, in fact, it protects the building. So it can be used for repairs on uh, yeah, yeah. the senior center? The on senior the existing housing. project, on yeah. existing ground, right. Oh, okay. And it could also be used for, um, in a private, uh, public-private partnership if there are, is a private developer who wants to develop affordable housing. Uh, some of that money can be used for that purpose. Um, and you can, if down the road a couple of years when you had, when there was sufficient money, you could bond out to build additional senior housing you can you can bond money and uh, and pay the principal and interest principal and interest from the uh, receipts from the community preservation act so that you could ostensibly do uh, one or two million dollars for example as long as you bonded it out over 10 years uh, yeah. and pay it off with the money that comes into the community preservation fund uh, any other questions from the board just um Good, go good. Ahead. Nope, go ahead. Go ahead. Nope, nope, go ahead. Oh, the rookie, right? That down the end, Tom. Oh, there you go. Um, just on the uh, Island Grove Bridge engineering study, would that be through the Army Corps engineers or, or different, or do you, or do you know? To bid to, uh, uh, bids would be solicited um, for, for an engineering firm to do the work. Uh, and if the uh, proponent, who happened to be Sean Riley and, and the Historical Commission, I guess in conjunction, were satisfied with the engineering, then they would do that. It could be the Army Corps. I doubt that it would be. It would be, it would be a private right. engineering yep. firm. Okay. Right. I just, right. Thank you. Just on the anticipated revenue, Jack, is that the revenue doesn't include any state funding at this point? No. Correct? No. In, in this year's, this yeah. year's number, this year's no. Number, yeah. we, we don't get our first state reimbursement until November. Okay. 
and um, receipts from uh, the registry of deeds where the, where the money is accumulated for the state trust fund is not where they hope it is would be. Uh, they do have legislation in there to increase the fee to be paid at the registry. Um, they have uh, over half the House and Senate uh, as co-sponsors of the legislation, which means nothing, but we'll see what happens. One other question. Um, what type of tracking do we have to do if we expel the money? Do we have to have, do we have to keep the books to show where we yes. actually, and the, how long the do we have to keep set up For each project the town meeting approves, the accountant will set up a separate uh, Project entry plan. for that for that particular project. Uh, as the project goes forward, um, Community Preservation Committee will sign off on it, and we'll have to satisfy the accountant that the paperwork is appropriate before she pays any bills. Okay. But it's a separate account for each project. <coughs> Thank you. The money that we set aside for the for housing, because we didn't have any housing projects, that'll be set aside in a separate account too. Okay. Thank you. This is more for and the procurement for these projects goes through you, correct? <clears throat> yes, they all no go office. through. Yes, yes. We go. They all. Whoever is awarded uh, by the town meeting the, the, the uh, money, they have to follow the public procurement process, right? and they'll be made aware of that. So that's not an issue. It should not be an issue. Okay. All set. I am. I'm good. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you, Jack. And we come to action discussion items. If it's uh, agreeable with the board, um, I'm not sure how long the um, discussion on Article 12 is going to take. I'd like to move forward um, five and six so that Mr. Alwick can uh, can come up. Is that agreeable? That's fine. Sure. Mr. Alwick, would you like to come to the microphone, please? And um, discussion of Abington Celebrates Road Race and also a request for a one-day liquor license. So if you want to start with the Abington Celebrates 5K Fun Run. Absolutely. Thank you all for the opportunity to meet with you tonight. Hopefully in your packets you have a little uh, handbill about the 5K Fun Run that we're planning to have on Founders Day, which is Saturday, June 10th at 8.30 in the morning. And also it uh, outlines the route as well on the map starting at Beaverbrook Elementary School, uh, heading up Washington um, onto Adams, through the cemetery, through um, Island Grove, actually after a little jaunt up Central Street, and uh, back Washington Street, back to the point of beginning. Um, at some point, I think we're probably going to want to do a serious fundraiser with this, with timers and bibs and everything else. But right now, our first time out of the gate here, so to speak, we're just looking for a good old-fashioned foot race. And um, in terms of any, any money we're making, we're, we're planning to sell commemorative uh, T-shirts with a logo that you see on the upper right-hand corner. Um, and uh, those will be available as our, our means of fundraising. And we, we may be looking for sponsors to uh, help us pay for those as well, which will increase our, our total net that we'll get out of it. It's one of many events that we're planning for the day. Oh, I should mention, um, I have been in touch with Chief Majenski about this and just had an email from him uh, late this afternoon saying he would support it. We're going to be meeting and talk about allocating assets on the various involvements that the police will have over the course of the weekend, but um, this one certainly has his support. So I thought that was an important thing to discuss. That was going to be a question, so. Uh, there he's, you go. He's already been in touch <laughs> with our office confirming that. Okay. He beat me to it. Very good. Uh, anyway, but it's part of a much bigger event, and I, I see a couple of members of Abington Celebrates here as well. Uh, we're starting again on Friday night with a kick-off cookout at United Church of Christ. Um, the Founders Day Fun Run will begin the Saturday event, assuming you folks approve it. Uh, there'll be a kids' fishing derby also that morning. Actually, we're hoping for more than kids, but um, it's not not the weekend when everyone can fish for free so uh, but kids can so we're, we're aiming it in that direction the Civil War encampment is coming back to Island Grove Park again where they're always a big hit uh, the Boy Scouts are joining them this year at least Abington maybe Rockland and Whitman from what I'm hearing 
Uh, Joe's Crazy Critters are going to be at Island Grove. Again, they're always a big hit. They'll be there in the afternoon. Uh, we're going to have uh, a pizza event, and I keep calling it Pizza Palooza, and that's why it's Pizza Pandemonium, I believe is the correct name, will be uh, at the Polish Club this year. Last, last year we had done it at the Senior Center, but this year it's at the Polish Club. Um, that evening, that is Saturday evening, we'll have Luminaria on Memorial Bridge. We'll be launching Wish Lanterns in the Pool again. We'll have musical entertainment in the campground by the Civil War band Shades of Grey and the Candlelight Tour of the campground. Uh, Sunday morning, there's a uh, pancake breakfast that I believe is at the Legion uh, and put on by the Lions. And um, at Island Grove, there'll be a church service, and in particular, it's a, a Fireman's Memorial service. We're coinciding with Fireman's Memorial Weekend. And we did last year and didn't really make enough of it. And I think this year we're going to make an effort to make more of it. And we're going to repeat last year's event of Touch a Truck at um, the Town Highway Barn and Police Station. I believe the police station will also be open for tours. Um, we're looking at also having not just touch a truck, but, but see a car, because we don't touch the cars, but a little bit of a car show going on at the same time. The Boy Scouts car show is not that weekend, so we won't be conflicting. And we'll have music by the Corvairs, as I understand it. So it looks to be an event-filled weekend, and we're, we're very excited about it. We try to do more and grow every year. Uh, so I'd be happy to entertain any questions about the road race in specific or the weekend in general. I didn't see this on our agenda. I didn't know you were going to talk about all these events. Sorry. So. <laughs> <laughs> you did. It's hard, yeah, <laughs> hard to do one without doing the others. <laughs> um, does the board want to act upon the road race now? Sure. Sure. Go ahead. Motion to approve the uh, 5K Fund Founders Day road race on June 10th at 830. Second. Motion is made and second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Okay. Excellent. Next order of business. Thank you all. Next order of business. The Abington High School class of 1972 is having a three-part class reunion on the weekend of May 19th and May 20th. Uh, we're starting with a Friday night reception at the Dyer Memorial Library. We're then going to Saturday morning have brunch at the Abington High School cafeteria for the very last time because a month after that, it's getting hit by the wrecking ball or sometime shortly thereafter. We were hoping to set up a tour of the new school afterwards, but that's not happening. Um, however, we, are, uh, we have made arrangements with Park and Rec to uh, use the cabin in the Grove on Saturday night for a soiree. And uh, we are renting a tent to put on the lawn next to the cabin, a 20 by 40 tent with tables and chairs under it. And uh, we would like to have a bar service in to serve alcohol um, at that event. Uh, the event is from 7 to 11. We do have acoustic live entertainment. Tony Karsha will be playing from uh, 8 to 9. Um, and what else? Um, we have chatted with uh, Roger Woods and the Polish Club, and they are willing to be our servers and take care of that aspect for us. I just have one question. Have you contacted the police about this? And only because, you know, I just thought it was the cabin, and now there's going to be a big tent and people out there in music. I just have concerns that maybe, you know, maybe they should be made aware of it. Just you know, I have not. We have a total right now of 42 people who've res responded that they're attending. Well, now that you're also on TV, you're going to have more people. Uh, no, we won't. <laughs> I, I'm figuring 50, quite honestly, and we're, we're doing seating for, I think, 48 or something like that out under the tent. So it's not a huge event, and, you know, if you do the math, we're a bunch of 62- and 63-year-olds. So uh, I, I think most of our wild party days are behind us, but I suppose I can't speak for all of my classmates. And I know that we have um, all the pertinent information from the Polish Club as far as their TIPS training and their insurance bond. We've, yeah. had, we've used them in the past, so I'm that's sure right. that's up mm -hmm. to date. So. Um, any questions from the board? Would that be a full liquor license, not, uh, not beer and wine, just full, full liquor? Okay. It would be full. Anything else? I have no uh, do we have a motion? Will we approve a uh, one-day liquor license uh, for class reunion 1972 at the Cabin of the Grove, May 20th, 2017, from 7 p.m. until 11 p.m.? Second. We have a motion and a second. I'd just like to comment that 
uh, the class of 72 is lucky to have such a, 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 a good event planner on board. Um, a lot of experience. Um, for the discussion, Bob? I just would like to add the, the uh, notion of, of informing the police department about the event now. Um, just to make sure that they get notified. That's I all. will do so immediately. Okay. One of our classmates actually has a son who's now on the force. Yeah. Here you go. Well, I'll make that part of my motion if you want, but with, Please, not, with notification mind. to the police department. No Thank problem. You very much. Second. All right. Motion made and seconded and amended. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> Unanimous vote. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you all very much. <coughs> uh, we're going to go down to number two. Uh, Mr. Glenn LaPointe, petitioner, Article 12, annual town meeting. Let me see if I can dig out Article 12 really quick, and I'll read Article 12 if it's not too long. It is not too long. Article 12, to see if, the t if it was long, you would have to read it. Thank you very much. To see if the town will vote to grant a non-exclusive 60-foot wide access and utility easement along the westerly sideline of the town's senior center property located at 441 Summer Street to Abington Investments, LLC, for the sole purpose of providing vehicular access and utility connections to serve certain age restricted senior housing residences to be constructed on abutting land owned by Abington Investments LLC and shown as assessors map 18 lot 6 or take any other action relative there too. Um, in our packets or on the table I should say we have some information about that. And I know we have a, a lot of people here. I'm not sure who's going to speak but who's going to speak and come on up to the microphone. Oh they're throwing you to the walls huh? <laughs> if you can state your name and address please. Uh, my name is Glenn LaPointe Jr. And uh, yeah, I drew the short straw to uh, get up here and, uh, and address you guys. I'm um, Glenn LaPointe Jr., 311 Lincoln Street, uh, obviously in Abington. Um, I'm speaking on behalf of Abington Investments tonight. Um, two of my brothers, Josh and Marcus, who are here, and also my father. Um, we're looking to get an access easement from um, the senior center um, to our land uh, out back. Um, we appreciate the opportunity to give the Board of Selectmen a little background about the article we've submitted to ask the town to approve an easement to allow us to extend the senior citizen driveway onto our property. My father, brothers, and I are currently own an 8 to 10 uh, acres of buildable land which is located next to and south of the senior center land. The town of Abington currently has an extreme shortage of affordable apartments for our senior citizens. We'd also like to help resolve the problem by constructing senior housing on the property. The approval of this article at town meeting will allow us to extend the existing senior center driveway and utilities to, to connect our property, which will allow us to proceed with the submission of plans to our local boards and other permit, permitting authorities to work out the details of the final site plan in the buildings. Currently, we had heard that there was a three-year waiting list, but as of this morning, uh, one of my brothers actually called to find out there's a five to seven-year waiting list to get into uh, senior housing in Abington right now. Um, those, those are run, obviously, by the Abington Housing Authority. Uh, in our opinion, no, no new senior housing has been constructed in Abington during my lifetime, and I don't think anybody sees any federal or state money becoming available to the town in the near future. Simply put, the only way we as a town can add to our senior housing stock, in our opinion, is to provide uh, for private citizens to put up the seed money, borrow the money, and then work with other companies and agencies to build some new senior apartments. My family is willing to put up such an investment, and we've met with the Board of Directors of the Council of Aging, uh, I think on two or three separate occasions, and I do know some of the members are here, um, just to kind of discuss um, things with them and, and keep them in a loop. Um, we're happy to report that they have unanimously voted to support the request of the easement and support our efforts to building more senior housing in the back. Um, I do have a couple just kind of bullet points that I'm thinking that you guys are going to have questions, obviously, but I'll see if I can just answer a couple of them quickly Absolutely. for you before we get going too far. Um, we're obviously here tonight looking for your support for the project. Um, we're asking for a 60-foot easement for driveway and utilities. Um, we've already met with the board, as I mentioned before, uh, and we do have their support. Um, we've agreed in, in turn to do some upgrades to the senior center, which is in need of some, some fixing up. Um, some of the things that we've agreed to do is uh, possibly relocate one of the entrances to allow for an easier access to the building. Um, we talked about um, extending the parking lot and making more parking for the senior center. Um, and I know there was something brought up about they having some problems with the roof, so we agreed that we would also entertain um, some roof issues. Um, just by what we're looking at, we're estimating that to be probably in the neighborhood of about $50,000 towards the, towards the senior um, 
towards the senior center itself. Um, in our opinion, the project will help fix the town's lack of senior housing without adding to the residents' tax bill. Uh, we're, we're thinking that at some point in the future, the, the townspeople are probably going to get hit up with, you know, what are we going to do with, with this? And it's probably going to end up being something that the townspeople are going to end up either having to vote on or pay for. Um, our hope is to handle this privately. And our hope is to kind of solve this problem um, by taking care of, you know, the senior issue before it really becomes any worse. Um, being, in our opinion, being a, being a senior project, it shouldn't put too much of a strain on our school systems. Um, most of the town infrastructure, it shouldn't, and the water and sewer use uh, used by the senior citizens uh, isn't, it's not like you're, um, you know, housing a, a family of four. So we're hoping that that has uh, minimum impact. Um, it's going to also um, increase the units by about, well, they're talking about 144 units into this, all right, which they estimate will take um, the burden off of the uh, Abington Housing Authority. Um, Abington residents will get, a, will get preference uh, as far as how the rentals go, and the um, units will be uh, privately managed by a management company. So if you guys have any questions, uh, I will definitely try to answer them. If I can't answer them, they're too technical. I do have uh, Mr. Sean Carpenter in the audience who's uh, in charge of the uh, <coughs> permitting process through the state. Um, he's got an extensive knowledge of, of you know, anything that I may not be able to answer. Thank you. Um, questions? Mr. Burns. Well, you know, what are you gonna be uh, charging for rent? It, the, basically, it's gonna be affordable. So right now, as far as I know, the rents are basically based off of um, the same rents that the, the Abington Housing Authority is charging. And 30 percent. If, if I'm not right on that, Sean, then I would. Have been here. I would. Uh, yeah, I'd invite you to ask to answer that. <laughs> Thank you, uh, to the chairman, uh, Sean Carpenter, uh, Shamrock Development. I'm a consultant for a number of these projects statewide, and um, this will actually be a privately funded, uh, privately uh, financed. Uh, and the anticipation is through the low-income housing tax credit program for seniors. Um, the rents will range from a studio rent to about eight, would, would be about $855 to uh, market rents, which may exceed 1450 on the uh, two-bedroom, uh, excuse me, one-bedroom market. Uh, two bedrooms, uh, two bedroom, two bath would be around $1,100. Um, the income limits just changed about two weeks ago, three weeks ago. So uh, Abington was one of the towns where the income limits actually went down, where the rest of the state went up. Um, so th there might be a correction in that, you know, perhaps. But but the $1,100 is, is the, the target right now, including a utility allowance. Um, and that's for folks at 60% of the AMI. Can I just follow up on that? Do, they, do those fluctuate yeah. yearly or as far as setting the rate or? Yeah. yeah. Um, so the you know they're set by the federal the income limits are set by the federal government every year uh, and then there's a fair market rent which is how the the housing authority sets their rents um, those two are not mutually exclusive but the uh, oh, in October when the fair market rents are, are issued the, the payment standard from the housing authority will be set then when the income limits come out that's how the tax credit rents are set and it's about 30 percent of that of the high end of that that income limit, uh, depending on where you're at. So these units would be at 50 percent, 60 percent, and 80 percent of the AMI. Thank you. Yep. Questions? Now, there is another access road into this property, correct, off of Plymouth correct Street. Off of Plymouth Street, yes. And do you have a preference as to which would be the main entrance in, or, or do I guess? Uh, the police are probably going to request that you use one of in particular or do it yes okay. we're going to ask them um what their preference is on that the the reason that we're asking for this easement is because um we do have access off of Plymouth street but we're wondering if the fire department may want more than one uh access point especially where it's senior housing they may want to be able to get in and in, in uh separate areas um so we'll ask them their opinion on, on that. But yeah, we certainly can access it from Plymouth. And with this easement, we would be allowed to access it through the senior. The other thing is we're hoping that uh, we can kind of incorporate the senior center into this project where it 
one kind of helps the other. That um, makes sense. That, that's that's the hope. You know, one basically almost community up there with the senior center already established. Um, and then obviously ours would be private, so any maintenance that goes on, um, you know, any of that stuff is basically <coughs> privately done. You know, any of the repairs done up there, privately done, it's, it's no, you know, at that point, no burden to the town to, you know, obviously repair, maintain. Um, I mean, we're thinking that this is something that, you know, hopefully works out well for the town. Um, it's, there's definitely a need for it. Um, we're trying to kind of think along the lines of obviously me and my brothers and my father all live in the town. We're trying to think of projects that we can do that are going to hopefully in the long run better Abington, you know, and this is one of the things that we think will uh, work out nicely. Would all the utilities be coming in this way either either way? I'm more than likely, if if we right. if we get this easement, then more than likely we will take the utilities through there because they're it's it's a short run. Uh, as far, most of those utilities are already in there. If not, then we would have to take them in off of Plymouth Street. Okay. Just a couple more. Glenn, how how close to the building is the easement? Do you know? Um, I do have it. I think it, it is sketched out there. I'm yeah, not I have it. I see. It. Is sure, off the top of my head, but. It, it about 17 feet 70 yeah, 77 feet I believe is, is roughly how far it is off and that's From the that's um, one of the entrance ways is actually on that side mr. Burmite right? so yeah. what we one of the as I had said before we're, we're talking about relocating that entrance to a okay. better spot and perhaps having um, some an area where you can pull in and actually drop off um, so that was the the door that I was actually the entrance ways that I was actually talking about okay. um, yeah. That yeah, because that, that could be an issue. If that it's was that one of the reasons we're talking about offering to, to basically. So in other words, you'd have the main entrance would be probably in a different location yeah. as to where it is right now, just for that reason. Yeah. And, and as far as the age restriction, what is the age restriction? Is is it 55? Is it 60? 62? I had to make sure we get my old man in there. So. <laughs> <laughs> He'll kill me for saying that, but uh, me and the boys have to keep that in mind as well, you know. And, and how does that go into effect? Is that part of your site plan approval that it will say you have to build a this particular project with 62 or over housing is that how that works or that, that's the way that the financing is structured um, so the, the this process will go through a comprehensive permit process um, that will include age restricted housing so there's two levels of age restricted housing 55 or 62 but this would fall under the 60 and that condition will stay there Right, the 60, age 62. Yeah, 60. So, so elderly is considered 62 or disabled. Okay. And this this access easement is only for senior housing. So yes. it's not like we can do anything. But that's that was going to be my next. Exactly. Question, right? this, it, this is restricted to. So senior if housing. you decide not to do senior housing, and then this, this, this uh, that's no, exactly right. right. That's exactly right. This is just for senior housing only. And if you do get this, great. If you don't, would you still go for? Are you still planning on going forward or? Uh, um, I mean, we, we could still go forward over to, you know, entertain other avenues, yeah. I guess. But I mean, you know, if we were to just build condos or a regular apartment complex out there, I mean, to be honest with you, there's probably more money in that for us where once you start limiting things and restricting things to ages and stuff like that, you start, um, I guess, somewhat cutting into your profit margin mm -hmm. at that point. So uh, we're thinking that the reason that we'd like to do this is because it actually makes sense for for the town, yeah. you know, as well as us. So it should be a project that, I mean, we're happy to present. Um, hopefully we work hand in hand with, you know, obviously the selectmen, the um, council of the aging, and, you know, I think we're probably gonna see planning board also at some point, right, in, um, and uh, zoning. So, I mean, it's something that we're hoping everybody kind of, you know, we're, we're open for suggestions as well. If, if I could just add to that, the, the, re the restricted housing, the affordable restriction, because that that uh, the original access into the site is a thousand, it's over a thousand feet from from Plymouth Street. Um, without this easement, it actually becomes less viable mm -hmm. to do this as all restricted housing, which is really what the town needs. needs. So you'd have what you'd see, and I'm just speaking from just completely theoretically, based on what I've seen in other projects. You'll see a reduction from say 80 percent affordable to 60 percent affordable and have a lot more market rate units. Yep. So. Thanks. Uh, on the plan, there's a proposed 25-foot right away that seems to be washed over by the easement. Is that, is that affected directly or indirectly by this easement granting, if it was allowed? 
that proposed right away going off to the lot two land? Right. Is that um, is that already been approved or is that something that that right away is already um, been established? There. It's yes. already been established. Yeah, it was established, I think, actually before the senior center. Uh, yeah. When it was. Um, or not oh, the church. Or yeah. Church, the church yes. before exactly. Okay. That's actually kind of the entrance to the proposed dog park. Mm -hmm. Correct. Correct. But we were sharing the park. The dog park was going to share the parking lot anyway, so this might help the dog park in, in the long run if the parking lot gets expanded. So this will probably help in that situation. It's not going to hurt the dog park at all. Okay. Um, I did have one more question. Yes, Mr. Burling. It's probably more for Rick. Rick, as far as the maintenance of that, if that easement is granted, who would be responsible for maintaining the roadway in? Is that going to be the builder or is it going to be the town or uh, that that well currently it's it's maintained by the town right so i don't think that would change it's still a public roadway so um the easement it's it's again granting an easement it's still still a public roadway and the town would still have to take care of. in fact it, it would probably be easier to take care of actually if it's a um i would think if it's a, um, i guess would say a more uh modern roadway than we currently have uh, but I, I, I but there's going to have roadway. to be some construction done on the roadway itself, right? To get it would have to be. Yes. Yeah. What's there now is not going to be what you're going to be driving over. Correct. So is that something you guys would be paying for? I would imagine? We would be doing yes. The, the construction would be done by you. Exactly. Correct. Yeah. Exactly. And then the maintenance after that would be um, on the town. At least up into a, the, uh, the the edge of the what is the, the town's yep. property right now. But yep. And then we would so, take it from there. Correct. Um, I guess I have a question. This, this question might be for Mr. Carpenter. Um, we talked about a preference for Abington residents, you know, that are on the list, waiting list now, the Housing Authority list. Um, and I've also heard uh, talk about a preference for veterans. Is that something that gets, is it automatic or does it have to be written into the contract or how, how would that work? So every project has a, um, has a, a tenant selection plan. In, in Massachusetts, veterans have a, a homeless veterans have an automatic preference so so many of them it's standard language and many of the tenant selection criteria of veterans preference is, is automatic um, a resident preference is something that is often required as part of the well part of two things part of the comprehensive permit process but also part of the allocation of the tax credits so um, in this case you know unless the developer decided not to do an, Ab uh, an Abington resident preference, which I think would be counterproductive to what they're doing, uh, unless they took it out, it, it would be automatic. You know, I mean, I, 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 it, I, it's, it's a rare event when somebody doesn't put a resident preference on their own town's development. No, would this be confusing? How do I word this right? The Housing Authority has control of two or three large scale properties in town, you know, the housing project. Now, this would not be under control of the housing authority, though. This would be a, a, a private thing. This would be Is that going to, does it affect the housing authority's role or does it affect no. their, I mean. Not at all. Not, not at all. They can still fall under the same guidelines that the housing authority people fall under as far as the payment, what they pay. Right, same no, this formula? Has, this has nothing to do with the housing authority whatsoever. Nothing to do with the housing authority. No. So no. they would have to, the people on the housing authority list would have to apply to a, a separate list. Okay. Yeah, so so the housing authority, when, when folks think about housing authority, that's an operating subsidy where the, the housing authority, other than the rents, uh, the units that they run, uh, they would provide, a, say, a Section 8 voucher or, or some other type of voucher, maybe through VASH or, or whoever. Um, that pays somebody's rent. This housing is, is rent restricted because the subsidy actually comes in through the development. They, they pay for about 40%. The state through the federal program will pay about 40% of the development costs. And in return, the, uh, the developer, in this case, Abington Investments LLC, the LaPointe's, will re agree to keep their rents at restricted levels. So the rents, so nobody's subsidizing the rent. The rents are at the rents level. Now the, the waiting lists are handled by the management company that they would they would hire, and, th and the state will require the management company will be a professionally uh, a professional management company that has uh, certifications in the tax credit program. Okay, so it wouldn't be someone going, I don't like this person. No, then I go. And yeah, that would be <laughs> illegal. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. Yeah. yeah. Uh, any other questions from the board? Uh, do we want to act upon this motion? Do we want to discuss it further in this article? Or? Well, we're going to go through the whole warrant, right? So we are, yeah. I guess we, are, we have a meet. Mr. Chairman? Yes, I'm sorry. No, come on, Rick. Where 
just need to come up with it. Uh, I'm Rick Collins. I'm a member yeah. of the planning board. I'm not here to speak on behalf hey, of the planning the board. Just wanted yeah. to put it out there that this is not something the planning board has seen or considered or can weigh in on at this point. Um, that being said, the town's master plan does call for more affordable housing, more senior housing options. Uh, general planning principles suggest that putting a, a development like this next to other um, details such as a senior center, as the recreational opportunities with the pickleball courts, next to the senior van, um, next to public transportation, that those generally meet good planning principles, um, just on the broad face of it. Um, if this is done through the comprehensive permit process, it then counts towards the, the town's affordable housing inventory. And if it's 144 units, 144 units that puts the town very close to the 10% minimum uh, that the state prefers to have and, and to give it some control over future development needs. Um, so without weighing in on the project specifically, uh, I can say that uh, there's a lot to consider here um, regarding this proposal. Thank you, Rick. Okay, so we're all set. Yeah. We're all set. Thank you. Yes, thanks for your time. Thank you. Appreciate Thank you. it. All right. Approval of April 24, 2017, open session minute. at this meeting and Maureen is not here so myself uh, let's see anybody can make the motion I guess April 24th is just a regular regular meeting minutes yeah I did send one correction over to you Dory if you got it on page two that last vote I think was three three one one that was, that was the, uh, um, the dumping I mean the uh, yeah. bill no I think no not that one the other one but then I wanted to reconsider right. okay. yeah no that's correct all right my mistake I'd move they be approved second motion made and seconded all forever all right opposed and one abstention abstain <coughs> all right um discussion of installing a stop sign in orange Belmont Street that was uh, Mr. Zanson had asked to, to have that on. For yeah, I've heard from uh, some neighbors on that street, and I'm sure another selectman might have, and uh, other residents might have too. But um, uh, there was recently a, a dog hit by a car and killed there. And um, from doing a little bit of research on this, and uh, I was talking to Rick today, uh, maybe you could actually. Uh, give some statistics um, the, the speed that they're going down that street just unbelievable the police had done some uh, studies there I think and, uh, we're thinking if we get a stop sign it's I think that's about halfway down is it a little more than half yeah it'll Depends slow, which from yeah, it'll or slow the traffic down going through there you want to put a stop sign on Orange Street or on, on Belmont on Orange correct uh, Rick Collins 74 Orange Street uh, just some quick background about the street. The street is uh, about 15 houses. It runs between Route 18 and Washington Street. Uh, people know it as kind of the, the next to Bailey's Garage and Mary Lou's. It runs down the hill, back up the hill out to Route 18. Um, it's been a uh, traffic issue for years as the people who are in this room have been on this street a lot longer than I have, uh, including Mr. Manning. Um, Last year, it was considered enough of an issue that Old Colony Planning was asked to conduct a traffic study of the street and the surrounding roadways. And um, the, the study came back and confirmed what the residents there know, which is that uh, traffic was high for a road of its size, and the speed is fast for the road of its size. Again, just to talk about the road, the road surface itself is 22 feet wide. To put that into perspective, the bridge that crosses out here is 24 feet wide. So our street does not have um, a curb. The sidewalk connects basically directly to the pavement. 
and the telephone poles and spots are actually right on the roadway. So it's not a very well, it's an old country lane, it's not meant to handle a lot of traffic and it's become a popular cut through. Um, the board in its wisdom agreed to uh, a truck ban earlier this year and we have seen a noticeable decline in the number of uh, box trucks and tractor trailers using the road as a cut through. Um, the lingering issue, however, is the speed and the, the study that they did in November found um, that the average, well, the 85th percentile speed, which is the speed that they, they mark, was 36 miles per hour, which is high for a road of this layout and this size. Uh, what's concerning is that in two days, they clocked five cars going over 50 on this street and 28 cars going over 45 on this street. And again, this is a very narrow, small roadway. Um, there are eight children under the age of eight that live on the street. There are several dogs that live on the street. It's popular for dog walkers because it goes around a block. And um, the residents are hoping to see what can be done to start to take care of some of this speed. One idea that had been thrown out was the possibility of putting a stop sign or two stop signs really uh, at the Belmont Street, uh, Orange Street three-way intersection, uh, whether or not that would be possible or if there were any other traffic calming measures that can be implemented, whether it's uh, a radar trailer, um, whether it's uh, dedicating um, police uh, patrols, which is, I know, very difficult <coughs> considering the, the resources they have. Um, but really, we're just hoping to start this conversation and, and figure out if there's anything, anything that can be done. I don't want to speak for my neighbors. I have a couple here. If they want to join me, I would encourage them to, but that's I, it for now. No, I, I, I would have been more than happy to have uh, asked the chief about uh, the issue of speed if, uh, if uh, quite some time ago, if, uh, if that was a, if you brought that to my attention. But um, with regard to specifically the stop sign issue, um, uh, I think that's uh, obviously that's not hard to erect a stop sign. Sometimes you know we don't want to create bigger. Uh, sometimes signage can create unintended consequences. I don't know that that would be a problem here, though. I know you're you're more of a planning planner than I am, but I don't know that that would be a, a particularly an issue here. I'm glad to see that the even in a short time, though, and it's good to hear that the uh, the, the the truck traffic at least has subsided a little bit noticeably i haven't noticed that i don't, I don't know, know if that's been if, if, has, if, oh, it. Re, has it helped a little bit so far at least noticeably i don't know you, no I, I understand that okay because i'm certainly happy to ask uh, the chief too if they can pay some uh pay some attention to that in the near near, near future um that's not a problem Rick, sorry what, was no. the chief not informed of the study that was done or I know he was included yeah. on the email that but the went out, but you know. yeah, the study was specifically done in, in uh, with the intent, with the uh, specifically uh, in, with the request to Old Colony Planning Council uh, uh, in light of asking for a, whether or not a truck exclusion um, was appropriate for that in other streets in and around that area. So that was the the focus of the study. It wasn't a speed study per se, but it was just a traffic study in general. And they discovered uh, that. So by doing that the was study. the context of right. it. But it, it, like you just said, they discovered it by doing the study. So. Yeah. So uh, that was the. Uh, I think the chief would have been advised. But. I'm not saying he hasn't been. Yeah, I, I haven't had a conversation yeah. about yeah. it. Previous previous years, um, Orange Street has had. Uh, been requested by the police department to make stops. They have gone down about halfway down the street to some of the buildings and have, have been very successful pulling over people. Um, I have to admit that I'm part of the Jack Bailey Friday morning coffee hour and <laughs> we can watch people zoom up from Route 18 up to Washington Street and sometimes accelerate beyond 40 to 50 miles an hour and go through yellow lights to the intersection. I also know that that intersection is a high collision intersection because it's offsetting intersection. Um, I've also also known in the past that several residents have put go slow signs on the sidewalk to keep people to go slow and they've been run over. Um, so it's not like I haven't experienced this in the past. And so um, it's unfortunately since the road work was done with the, on 123 several years ago, suddenly it was decided upon that 123 uh, would be an easy cut through for Orange Street. So that's 
the reason I came to the board last year with the heavy trucks, it was just getting ridiculous with the number 18 wheelers between 4.30, 5.30, 6.30 in the morning rumbling up the street. And they weren't rumbling up the street at 17 miles an hour. Um, and then the box trucks and everything else coming up, I thought it was necessary to go after the heavy, heavy exclusion. Um, it's my apologies for not including the speed issue, but it's not like it's not been known before. It, yeah. it is an issue with many side streets, not just my side street. I don't want to say it's my side street alone, but it's many side streets uh, in the town. It's just common, common practice that sure. people accelerate through the neighborhoods, and it's not really good. And, and I'm happy to say that my street has experienced a, a new breed of children on the street, and we, we're always cautious and careful. I've been on the street many times when I've screamed and yelled at drivers to slow down. I mean, that's, that's all you can do. Um, Excited putting your body out in the middle of the street. I just don't think I can do anything else. But I, I concur with Rick and the neighbors that the street has become a, a what I would call a no slow zone. <laughs> you know, uh, so I don't know if a stop sign or, or one or two stop signs would be viable. But I also know that a stop sign is a stop sign. Exactly. So it, it, it is something that they have to pay attention to. It also causes every one of the residents coming go either way, stopping at that street mm -hmm. to make the yes. turn. But I'd rather be safe than cautious with the children on the street. So I, I, I concur with uh, Rick that the uh, stop signs wouldn't be a bad idea. And I That's thank idea. Alex yeah. for taking the lead on that for me. Is that place. something the residents you think would, it would appreciate? Because, and, and again, I... I would be happy to go door to door to every resident idea. and get a signature if that's and something it, you think would be beneficial. Well, I'm not, I, I, I just, the reason I asked this, literally, uh, you know, within the last two weeks, uh, I had a, a, a meeting with residents, the chief and I did, uh, regarding some traffic concerns in a neighborhood. Uh, and the, uh, we're going to do some additional enforcement in a particular neighborhood. And the chief informed me uh, shortly after that meeting that, um, that one of the individuals we met with uh, had their, their own run in with the uh, authorities literally days before my meeting with that person so uh, you know so a lot of times it's it's the people in the neighborhoods who tend to be a little more careless because they're familiar with the neighborhood but I do realize that particular area is more of a cut through yeah. so um, so and again I'm not be, it's not me being sarcastic that it, 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 it can be the people who are the most familiar with a particular neighborhood that can be the most careless in a neighborhood I see it in the, the neighborhood I live in too it can be frustrating but I, but but I do believe I think you're right that particular neighborhood stop signs can be the perfect solution um, you know to keeping traffic moving slowly but um, but if that's something that the residents uh, would be supportive of I think that could be a, a you know, uh, a, a good a good fix rather than having uh, speed uh, patrols up there every every you know. Well, I understand couple you, you can't be and, everywhere. The police chief can't be everywhere every time. That's anybody. right. But whenever, whenever we've asked him to come by, he has. Yeah. And he's also shown success there. So it's not like he hasn't seen successful right. ticketing of speeders going through the street. Right. Um, you can't be everywhere, but I do believe a stop sign is the next step in in evolution of of slowing people down. People see a red sign, they will, doesn't mean they're going to stop any more than anything else, but they generally will because it's a stop yes, sign. So, right. um, I, I believe, and that's the reason why I came to the board a year ago, um, with the a volume of traffic coming through Orange Street and just my own, on, I'm, I'm speaking for myself now, sure. sitting at the top of the street on Friday mornings between the hours of 7 and 9, it's amazing how many cars fly up Orange Street. Yeah. And I, I apologize. Go right ahead. I apologize. There's no lights. There's no street lights on the other end. Is that something that's supposed to be a street light at so distance? I, I, I don't know the requirement of street lighting. I know people have requested street lights to be to installed on their street. Um, I, I also know at the yard end towards uh, Route 18, Orange Street narrows. <coughs> and one of my other issues was that the 18 wheelers coming through the street were taking the whole street to swing out of uh, swing out onto Route 18. It was virtually impossible to kind of have two-way traffic. I noticed the new curb. The curbs come out 
on both sides. Yeah. So. There, in doing some quick research, there are the state regulations discourage the use of stop signs solely for speed yeah. control. However, it is an intersection that this would potentially be located at. Um, and, and frankly, there's nothing else that meets the regulations on this road anyway. I mean, like I said, there's no curbing. There's, one, I think, one light on the entire street. It's not standard width. Um, you know, so... I, I think it's a good option. One of the stop signs will be located in front of my house, and I'm perfectly okay with it. Um, so I, I, if it's something we can look into, um, sign me up for it. I can't speak for all my neighbors, of course, but. Oh, one last thing can I say? I think it was last year I came home, there was a car smashed into the telephone pole. I've had, yeah. Right, halfway, right next to your house. I've had two cars hit the telephone pole in front of my house because yeah. literally it will jump out at a car if it's too close if you're too driving too close to the edge of the street it will literally jump out at you and i've had at least two if not three accidents in the past couple of years including one by an mbt yeah. charles Paul when they jump out um oh, yeah. personally i think this is an issue that Let's should involve the input from the police chief and the highway superintendent right. yeah um, i'd like to bring them in on this whether it be another sure. meeting or whether we just well, get some input from them i'll be happy to ask them to do a site inspection this week and have, we can have a recommendation for your next meeting sure. um it sounds like uh especially from the personal experiences of both the board members and, and the residents that um it sounds like almost a natural progression but i'll get a, an update and re, re, um, input from them for your next meeting but thank you if you'd like good suggestion i do yeah. have some i no, do have some thanks, concerns Rick. As, as rick yeah. noted that it's kind of a tough it's a it's like a t you know and, it, and yeah. if you put a stop sign stop sign here and then you've got someone's driveway it's like a, i think it's an apartment building there or something too it, it's just a little convoluted i should i should say but i think it's important that we bring the yeah. the chief and the highway guy into it stop yes sir stop yeah well, I think that's the first step right there. Well, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. We do have a fundamental speed limit. Right. And we could, all, we could possibly lower it too. So right. that's why the, I yeah. think it's important. Well, well why don't we get the input from the chief and uh, John Stone? Yeah. And, uh, and if they would like to meet good. with us, or if they just want to give us in, yeah. feedback, or right. I, I suspect they'll probably have a, a fairly strong. Uh, joint opinion to provide oh, perfect so okay okay All right well thank, thank you. you very much thank you thanks thank you very much thank you uh wow public comment is that right no no in your warrant. special warrant oh yeah that's the press that off subconsciously yeah. i guess my, <laughs> that's my first my first question to the board is do we want to make recommendations on all the articles um sometimes the board of selectmen does sometimes they the don't first question is do we we usually do I have no problem doing it. I just didn't know if we wanted to or we don't have to make them on all of them, go through them and make recommendations. I know in the past, and even in the past, sometimes the, the Board of Selectmen's recommendations have been in the handout at that, that, that meeting. So I guess that's the first question I want to ask the Board. Do we want to make, do want, do we want to make recommendations on, on as many articles as we can? I think we should. I think, uh, yes, okay. I think we have in the past. We should continue yep. to practice. Absolutely. All right. I think well, people being, will look to us to see what we decided. Said, and vote the other way. Yeah. We will tackle them one by one. There's <coughs> 200 something articles, but no, I'm with you. Yeah, um, right. Spe special, I'm town, them all. special town meeting, Article 1 is a transfer of funds to, to uh, for unpaid bills for previous years. Uh, and anybody has questions, we can. Well, didn't we uh, do this a couple of weeks ago? And then just, that was just to include them on the one. Oh, I see. Oh, 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 okay. Yeah, yeah. Just to see if we're going to. Yeah. Endorse them or not? Right. Yeah. 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 Okay. Article one. Does anybody have any um, questions for Rick on this? Is this the latest? This figures? is what this is what has been this defined. Is it, right? This is what was posted today. Yeah. Yes. Right. Does this mean that it's any <coughs> any departments overspent their budget? Well, Article one is our, our bills actually previous from previous, previous year? fiscal years. Correct. Bills that came in late, something else. Or, or yes, or okay. right off. Uh, right. You want motion for the? Yep. Motion to approve Article One as so written. Second. 
Motion made a second for a discussion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Article two, uh, transfer $200,000 from free cash to the stabilization fund. Um, does that $200,000 Match with that? What was that? Was it forty percent of the free cash? Uh, what, was that, what was our unwritten policy? Yeah, it, the the policy is sixty percent of stable uh, of free cash for stabilization. Uh, and I'm sorry, forty percent for OPEB trust and. Um, I'm sorry. Capital. Go ahead. Forty percent for capital and ten percent of the forty for OPEB. Thank you. However, because we're recommending uh, paying off uh, the uh, the debt. Uh, well, actually, rather than incurring debt to pay off the Glenowitz Way purchase last year at $575,000, uh, we're recommending uh, only $200,000 uh, uh, for stabilization this year. So. And this will bring us up to about 1.6 something. Uh, exactly, just under 1.7 million in, in stabilization. Okay. Motion to approve Article Two, support by the Board of Selectmen. Second. Uh, any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Article three, forty thousand dollars from free cash to OPEB. Other post-employment benefits. Very good. I try. Move and um, approve. Second. Motion is made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Forgot to say any discussion. Sorry. Sorry. Um, Transfer $363,943 from certified free cash to cover the FY 2017 snow and ice budget and a sum of $74,000 from certified free cash to cover the FY 2015 deferred snow and ice budget. And I believe that's the final year of the FY 25 snow correct. budget. That was a bad year. That's correct. Uh -huh. FY 25. Okay. Anybody? Motion for Motion. Motion. Second. Motion is made. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Article 5 of the special town meeting. This is for this year's budget to see if the town will vote to supplement appropriations made FY 27 operating budget under Article 1. And there's different yeah. um, switching from yeah. health insurance, overlay surplus, IT health insurance, tax title, fire salaries, ambulance salaries to other different accounts. So, um, is this paying prior year bills or is it paying current year bills? Current year bills. Yeah, FY7. Yeah, these are uh, end of the year um, yeah, transfers. Correct. Which happens every so, year. But so yes. We don't have we don't have trash shortfalls anymore. I'm sorry. But like when the June bill comes in, we don't have an overage and we still owe the company again, we have to come back and vote for more money anymore. Is that something that we this will pay the trash bill off of if for full this year this is yeah that's what this is intended to do is be the the end of year transfers right now there could be still end of june if there could be some very <coughs> small balances to still to that re remain but under mass general law the for the last several years there are the um the finance committee is allowed to make some small interdepartmental transfers within within some uh, but we try to take care of the major ones at the uh at town meeting though some a motion to uh, approve the support of the Board of Selectmen for Article 5. Second. Mr. Mayor, second. Um, I actually have a question. What is the Southfield assessment? What What is that and why be, are we being charged for that? The LT expense? Uh, I'm sorry? It's coming from, it's coming from the IT, IT expense, expense going to, to pay oh. a bill for the Southfield assessment. Oh, you? Did I, did I stump you? Uh, well, I know it's just the assessment that we get every year, and I think it was just convenient to take it out of. IT. Yeah, the, the town account. We're, so we're this paying is, money to Southfield for something. There's, yeah, there's a small assessment every year. Yeah, please tell me what the yeah. town accountant is. Yeah, it's always around this amount. Um, yeah, I'll get you more information on that, Ken. This is one of the it's end. In, of it's in the budget too. Yeah, the, to this year it's, yeah. it's gone up a little bit in, yeah. in this yeah. coming yeah. FY18 budget. Yeah, it's, in, it's in every year. As to why it went up, but. Uh, okay. but uh, all right, so we have a motion made and seconded for the discussion. Regional assessment that we all of three towns. Yeah. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Um, unanimous. Um, warrant for the in, uh, for the regular annual town meeting. Article one. And, and if I just just before we do this, there are a few typos on here. This was reviewed by town council, and what is actually posted has corrected the typos that are on here. Um, keep in mind that. Uh, Dory was back from vacation today, so typos were corrected before it was posted. So just uh, <laughs> so there are typos in here, or are there no typos? The typo, no, the typos that are in, on what's in front of you have been corrected. Before, but they were in your packet that you got Friday. 
but corrected before before the posting today, Monday, just so you know. So you can rest assured <laughs> that what's posted okay. is what should be there. Okay, Article 1 is actually the town's budget, which is all the documents at the end. I don't know yes. if has any concerns mm -hmm. about any of the light again, items or... Um, Yes, and then just uh, as I was going to mention in my notes, and I do apologize, there's no written town manager update, which you're used to seeing, because last week, uh, with the many night meetings and preparing for, uh, and several t an extra selectmen's meeting, I didn't have a chance to do a written update, but one of the, my comments was uh, to let you know the Finance Committee will be voting its recommendations this coming Wednesday night. Um, including its warrant and budget recommendations, but I do anticipate that uh, all is in order and they will be recommending the budget that's been presented and amended. Um, and what you have in front of you tonight is what they'll be voting to recommend on but Wednesday they, night. They too. haven't voted it yet. Do we Not yet. Wait for their vote before we approve? Not yet, but again, they. Do we normally wait for their approval before we approve? I don't have to. I think necessarily. I mean, if, if, if they approve something different than what we approve tonight, if we approve it, but we, we can revolt well, it on the 22nd. Right. And, of course, you know, the, uh, the, the special town meeting recommendations, particularly with, you know, stabilization, OPEB trust, the snow deficit, as well as um, the articles, the Article 3, the capital plan, for instance, all those are part and parcel of the entire spending plan, which includes the budget. So that's um, obviously that's what... Uh, um, as important as the budget in terms of you know our participation with the finance committee over these many months and in, um, in terms of putting this all together so and now I don't have to say anything after the meeting and tell manager notes so just think of all the time we've saved so <laughs> right, does the board feel comfortable making a recommendation on article one when I say the board any of you guys can speak up <laughs> <laughs> Could I just ask you a couple of questions on the revenue? Yes. Forecast? This year's new growth was 328, 224. Yes. And you're expecting 280,000 next year. Is there a reason why it's less than this year? Or? Well, is it a, a little bit conservative still? Yes, it's a little bit conservative. Um, you know, obviously, uh, Jack Pistorino is, you know, tends to be more, you know, a little bit conservative, as you would expect. Yep. Um, we b based, um, we, uh, a five-year average is, is in the, you know, 300 and um, th the 325 range. Um, last year um, was right on the mark, more or less, for the five-year average. So, um so obviously we still want to stay a little bit conservative, but it started out a little bit slow this year. Okay. So we're not very comfortable going up, you know, above 300,000. And we left a little bit of room for end of budget year adjustments. So that's really why um, um, we've, uh, we've kept that still a little bit conservative, but. Um, and then the same, the same question on the motor vehicle. Motor vehicle excise, uh, we, um, we did save committing less than what we took in last year. Yeah, really, I guess you'd say that those are the only two areas in the entire revenue stream that uh, um, where we've got we've we really had any flexibility. So we've tried to maintain re maintain that throughout the process. Um, um, and, and are you comfortable with the state aid number? Well, the state aid number, we, we, come out recently. yeah, um, we've obviously had, well, uh, we've had assurances that, uh, that the local aid package is not subject to uh, any significant change. But, uh, you know, there's not a huge comfort level for, in terms of what this means, in the, you know, for the longer term right. future. But, um the state aid package in general is incredibly modest to begin with, as you can see, and I'm sure as you hear and read yourself through your our municipal, you know, um, um, uh, you know, MMA bulletins, etc., that you all have, that you all read. So um, there isn't much for it. There isn't much, you know, no place for it to go as it stands <laughs> anyway. So. Um, but we've we've I don't want to say we've had you know high you know it's not a lock that that the next year's budget um, is can be compromised but we you know it's it, I think it's uh, better the odds are that uh, we're they're not going to 
local aid next year is not going to be a target for the administration or the legislature at this point so uh, but if we do stand to lose some local aid I think what's safe to say that you know the items that you happen to point out I think we probably have enough buffer right that we wouldn't have to <coughs> alter our budget process or go back to a, a spring uh, a fall town meeting okay. and that's I think from your years in past in the finance committee etc you that's why we try to leave a little bit of room no, I think conservative is yeah the, so the way to go There's nothing worse than that emergency town meeting to set the tax rate. You know. Article one. Just one more question. Sure. Article one is yeah. the budget. Just on the yeah. council on aging salaries. Yes. That's gone up. Yes, that major um, had a, uh, actually that was the last adjustment last week. Yeah. Um, there's been a, a I have uh, made a uh, uh, an adjustment to the salary budget specifically to address. Um, the uh, compensation of the COA director's salary by $7,500, um, which is still woefully inadequate based upon the director's salary, which is uh, still uh, puts that department head level salary really still in the realm of some of the clerical salaries in the, in the town. Um, I did have that conversation last week with the, with the um, finance committee and and I've let them know all along that that was the last adjustment to the budget um, pending conversations with appropriate people in the managers association so there's been no surprises um, all along so they were um, I don't want to say use the word receptive but they completely understood that was the timetable for the final adjustment um, and I've so that that's why that is up significantly as a percentage um, however um, it, it is still within uh, the, the parameters of the historic uh, division, we'll say, of revenue between the, uh, the school and non-school division of the overall budget. And I had one more on recreation. It, the total is basically the same as last year, but you've switched salaries decrease the overall salaries and increase the expense is there a reason for that or uh, yes because um, there is a reason it has to do with the um, salaries have gone down because there's been um, a, a position has been lowered um, there's a, um, there's been a uh, position I'm sorry um, let me revisit this in my mind uh, because of a reduction in force due to um, resignation uh, position wasn't filled no. full-time position wasn't filled um, in addition uh, some of the expenses um, we expect uh, in terms of fees um, um, because of some user fee expense we ex um, we hope to um, to uh, for use of fields we were we would put it move to the expense side um, um, but I think overall they say it's about the same in terms of yeah uh, it's the same so so we move it to the expense primarily because um, we expect to be taking you know more care of field space is what it comes down to so um, we expect to see that on the expense side as opposed to on the salary side and then the last one was that south field assessment is on here this this year it was 250 next year it's two thousand dollars so Again, okay. I'm not, I don't we just yeah we just get that's about we just get the assessment right as an estimate from our friends at Union Point. Well, the Union what does that actually use for? What what is the assessment for? Dory, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> Throw her under the bus. I know, yeah, no, I know all the the towns get, receive the assessment. Um, that's been uh, it's much just, for two thousand dollars. Mm. A little odd, but, uh, but yeah, it's just just. They send us a bill and we they send pay? Us a bill. Yeah, yep. so Does that pay for the salary for um, our that's our representative? Administrative. The administrative uh, I will get you a better answer yeah, for we'll better that. Answer. But uh, um, and, uh, uh, then how does that salary get paid? For revenue that they, the three towns collected. Right. To yeah. Get, uh, yeah. The I know it's not collect. big money, but let me get you. Yeah, let me get no, you it a, isn't. It's just rather than speculate, really. yeah. Yeah. let me get you a better answer to that. So. I did have one more, sorry. Sure. I thought Li you said that two times ago. That's it, no. Yes. Liability insurance, that's gone up 
Yes, uh, really? that could be higher than necessary, but we did get some uh, estimates primarily because of the property value on the new high school, middle school, pre-K building. So okay. um, well, hopefully higher than it needs to be, but that's the major, major piece there. Now I'm done. Okay. <laughs> I have a couple. The town accountant expense went from seven to seventeen. Town account. Oh, that's uh, that. This is the year we have to do our Gasby thirty-four. Um, oh, again, the Gasby thirty-four. Yes. Hate that Gasby thirty-four. Every three years. And the town council money going up from sixty to eighty. Right. We. That's uh, one of those uh, quasi snow. <laughs> budgets where uh, we should be probably looking to slowly fill that a little bit but it's a little more manageable than obviously snow and ice uh, yeah because so. we actually transfer money because we didn't we ran out of money so this that's year, one so. of right that was based on five -year average and we we do plan to have an animal officer that's why we went up with that yes uh, one of the uh, reasons specifically is this year of uh, last a couple of years we've had a, a tri-town agreement with Whitman and Hanson um, our portion, um, obviously, uh, is what you see in the budget for the prior, current year has been our portion, but Hanson is uh, no longer going to participate. So the good news is that uh, um, we're, we shouldn't be as spread thin with our animal control um, um, uh, personnel as we have been for the last couple of years. So we should have a little bit more, uh, a little bit better coverage. And my last one is the highway department. Um, there seems to be a, are we, do we have a fairly late major expense to buy new equipment this year for them? Because they, that, there's a significant increase of almost 90,000 plus there. Oh, that, oh, that is actually movement of uh, the, uh, the street Downing? lighting budget. So we're lighting, okay. Your street lighting. It's kind of the reformatting of the, uh, um, the uh, categories because of the public works for a legislative act. This is the first year it's being fully incorporated. Oh, yep. yeah. Yeah, so that's... There is. Okay. Thank you. That's... Uh, I'm done. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Nope. Um, you have a 10% increase in health insurance. you think that will be enough? Do we have any health insurance rates? Yeah. Uh, yes. Yes. The composite uh, is going to be just about 10%, correct, of all, of all our programs. Yes. Any other questions from the board? No. I will entertain a motion if the board feels comfortable. We can delay action on Article 1. Depending <coughs> on what you decide. Motion to approve Article 1 pending any major, large, outstanding decisions made by the Finance Committee. Second. So that means you're going to approve Article 1, but if they can, we can always revisit it. We, got, we, we can revisit it any time. Yeah. So. Right. Okay. <laughs> I don't know if we can revisit any time of that. We yeah, did. That's right. Reserve the right. Then, um, then I'll. Do you want me to change that then? It doesn't matter. Okay. Uh, motion to approve Article One. Uh, we have a second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. Article Two, two thousand forty-nine dollars to the town clerk to add to, to the town clerk's salary line item. This is for um, a raise, I guess, for the town clerk. And I think that would be equivalent to a three percent raise for the town clerk. Motion. And there, and just uh, for um, your benefit, last year uh, there was no increase uh, for the town clerk. Her position last year. Right. Do you have funds available for this particular? Uh, those would be raised and appropriated. So Room. again, within this, for, again within those available funds yeah. that would presumably come from whether they be new growth, motor vehicle. Yeah, yeah. but it's so it's available. Yes. 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 Move we approve. Second. Motion is made and seconded. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous vote. Article 3 is the capital plan. Um, really quickly, I'm going to read just so that people on TV can see it. Uh, Police Department uh, 2 Cruises, Town Hall Library, HVAC Compressor, and VADAR, whatever that, financial software, um, Town Hall Curb Repair, um, retired. Uh, Glenowitz Way Debt, Park and Rec uh, 
parking grounds, want a riding lawnmower, 21,000, Board of Health purchased more trash and recycling cards, 10,000, School Department and Exterior Lift at Frolio Middle School, 85,000, and textbooks, 225,000, Water Department uh, is from the Water Department, receipts, Turbine pump with like a month from Rockland, water regulation survey and testing, replacing filter at Great Sandy Bottom Pond, leak detection underground mains, purchase of water meters and Myers at roof, um, and sewer department, manhole lining, and stormwater management permit. Um, so, motion to approve Article 3. Second. Any further discussion? Uh, yeah. Rick, just on the uh, 225000 for the textbooks for the uh, Textbook, do you have yes. any information on that? Uh, well, that, um, well, the I guess that was uh, a piece of uh, something that had been originally proposed as a, obviously something that was within the school's budget initially, and um, they haven't quite uh, solidified exactly what they that's going to um, consist of yet. Um, technology, some slash technology books, and. Uh, as part of the whole budget deliberation uh, for next year, um, they weren't too sure, quite frankly, um, building the school budget by that amount of money for a, a purchase that isn't necessarily every single year. Um, kind of our deliberation was whether or not that should come out of the operating budget for at the moment. Um, so we part of our consideration was moving that to uh, um, um, article format. So uh, number one, um, it doesn't become part of the, the operating base. Um, and quite frankly, some people would argue that books aren't capital and that they don't um, last five years. I would argue that they do. Um, some would argue that they don't. It's a kind of philosophical question. Um, but it is essentially 1% you know, of, a, of uh, the school's operating budget if you want if you look at it as an operating cost so it is a one percent so that was kind of a, a I don't know if you want to call it a compromise per se but it's uh, um, it's not something that it could be really accommodated within the operating budget of the school um, in terms of the confines of uh, what's available for revenue this year so it's either has to be dealt with in the for in this format um, or else it can't be accommodated this year right so that's really what it comes down to but it's not just textbooks. Um, well, well, we don't. I'm sorry. I'm, so, I'm sorry. We assume it's not just textbooks. Well, it's textbooks, workbooks. Um, I not. I don't feel uh, completely qualified to speak to exactly what the full realm of uh, what the work program is that that consists of. I think believe it's textbooks and workbooks, uh, whatever the program programs are that the schools are going to use but it but it, it is it is obviously reading materials for mm -hmm. the programs is what it is for um, obviously Peter could Felicia could speak to it more specifically but uh, but they are but they're, they're not used they're not uh, um, you know they're not hardcore um, um, you know technology though you know, they are uh, materials that are that will um, you know, be usable for years, some years to come. Right. So it could be they're phone not, books. Yeah, they're not disposable, like so to speak. It's not disposable material. And by not being on the, the budget, then it won't mm -hmm. be compounded. Mm -hmm. yeah. Obviously, it's a major piece of the expenditure. Has that been something we've done in the past? Uh, not the last couple of years, if that's. Uh, okay. but. All right. So Article Three. How's the board feel about Article 3? I already made a motion. I already made a motion. Second. Second. Oh, that was the last minute discussion. That's right. Okay. Um, <laughs> no further discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? All right. Unanimous. Article 4 is a revolving fund article we have every year. There's 11 total revolving funds. I think we, the board had asked to increase one of them uh, by like 50% uh, on the J, revolving fund J. So I'll entertain a motion on the revolving funds if there's no questions. I do have one question on uh, K on the building department. Um, yeah. Now that eighty thousand dollars would that they start accumulating that on July first? At July first, he can't go out and hire two more people. No money. Money has to be available in the fund to pay somebody. Um, so no, you can't spend these in anticipation of revenue right. like you can with with. And so with the fund funds. starts July first. 
uh, yes. Starting to, to accumulate that up to $80,000 yes. in there. That is correct, yes. Okay. Right. Because I don't think we need two more people in the building department on July 1st. Yeah, I think I think this, um, I know, and again, I'm, this is no disrespect. Marshall Adams is, is uh, obviously very diligent and just very concerned about, uh, you know, an overflow of work, with, especially mm -hmm. with, this, with the new sewer agreement and with some of the plans that are on the drawing board. But I still think this is clearly wait and see, and I think this is a nice way to approach it right. and provides the, part, the resources, if necessary, to expand some part-time assistance. Not until you have it. That's right. So I think this is a nice compromise. But, but no, this uh, this is a, a good uh, way to wait and see if the funds come in the door, uh, then we can utilize them. So, uh, Rick, just on that also, um, and I haven't had a chance to look at um, yeah. all the all the budgets. Mm. Uh, is there salary um, in the building inspector's budget or in, in the? Is there salary in that? Yeah, yeah. The the uh, the salary, the building department salary has the full time uh, commission of salary and a full time uh, administrative uh, secretary salary, um, and the uh, the other than that, um, the there's a part time the wiring and plumbing inspectors right. are all run through this account, as well as a um, there's a, a part time zoning. Um, assistant that runs through this account. Okay, so those now, amounts are those amounts are in that budget. I just haven't had yep. a chance to look at it. I apologize, sure. so I just yep. want to make sure. Article four, motion to approve. Second. Motion made. Second. Further discussion. All in favor? All right. All right. Opposed? Unanimous. Article five, I think, is an annual article by the school committee. Fourteen thousand dollars for student transfer service to Abington students attending out of district vocational schools. Motion to approve Article 5. Second. Motion is made and second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Unanimous Article 6. Uh, community preservation recommendations that we heard tonight. Motion to approve. Second. second. Motion is made and second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous Article 7. Um, that is the surplus property list that uh, we saw. Um, that being said, can you contact the head of the surplus building committee and make sure that he's going to be uh, surplus Available. building committee? Sure. Uh, make sure that he's maybe give him some resources if he needs it. Maybe to get some a handout at least to we discussed about having a map of the town and somehow mapping out this. My recommendation would be to, to do two separate maps. One of this Diane Circle property because that's probably going to be the biggest issue, um, and then maybe just a handout with a map of Abington so you could. If anybody wants to bring up what's, what's up with this piece of property, we can discuss it. But just so everyone's clear at, in TV land, this is just for us to declare, declare it them, surplus. Right. So if we decide we want to do something with it, auction it, or whatever, we can do it. Right. We're not, for we're not selling it at town meeting. No, no. no. <laughs> Correct. Makes it available for sale by the board. Right. If that's what we choose to do. Correct. And, and, and the, 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 a lot of the purpose was... I mean, not to make money for the town, but just to get a lot of land back on the tax rolls. That's what the main purpose of, um, other than the schools, obviously, but the main purpose of the list of properties we have is, is mostly to get a lot of these, a lot of pieces are small. It's just to get them on the tax rolls. Motion to approve Article 7. Second. Motion made and second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. Article 8, Senior Citizen Property Tax Work Office, they want to increase the tax rebate program, is that correct? Uh, yes, by $100, correct. Okay. Move we approve. Second. Motion made and second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous Article 9. This is, what is this? Uh, oh, this is something to do with the property. Yeah, Bochecki property. Properties farm. Yes, this is the, uh, the uh, uh, adjustment to the, uh, the current a utility easement at the uh, rear of the uh, um, Griffin's Dairy property. I'm sorry. No, no this is the, this is a different this is one. Correct. This is the uh, improving a eminent domain taking of the Polrecki property that's uh, currently surrounded by the no, uh, Ames Noel State Park. Didn't we do that? Well, yes, it was given to the town in lieu of foreclosure. This is 
what uh, council has recommended as an option should we not be able to get the appropriate signatures from the administrators of, okay. of the deed uh, it's essentially a friendly eminent domain taking and they're aware of it they're absolutely aware of it okay. yes it's motion to approve article 9 second motion to make a second for a discussion all in favor aye, aye. opposed unanimous article 10 to uh, create a health insurance trust fund um, this is because we're going to insure ourselves basically is that correct okay. yes and right. yes more discussion on that is that are we working with other towns have you contacted other towns to, or we're just on our own now on we're, we'll be insuring ourselves correct but rather than be paying vendors out of our line item it's recommended that we create a trust fund uh, that we kind of pay ourselves <laughs> collect our um, employee contributions those go into the trust fund and then pay um, vendors, et cetera, from there. It's a lot neater than just paying ourselves, than paying from our line item. So this is the recommended approach to doing so. What is the employee's uh, share? Uh, for most of, uh, most of our employees are, uh, utilize uh, uh, our HMO that pays at 70-30, but there are some other programs that have different uh, contribution rates that are 60-40. Uh, uh, but most most of the people have taken uh, utilize the programs that are seventy thirty. Thank you, Rick. What are they? What what is the town under right now? I'm, I'm are you still under Mayflower? Or? Until June thirtieth, correct. Until June thirtieth. Yes. Okay, thanks. And this is to prepare for next year when we. Correct. Prepare. Yes. But your intent is to form another group, is that? Is yes, that we have case? a number of partners that we're speaking to, uh, heading towards FY nineteen, who did not have, um, who just weren't able to do this uh, uh, weren't able to beat the appropriate clock to uh, take votes etc before December 1st of 2016 to so this is Mayflower. just so I understand it so the town just the town of Abington will have for right now their own health starting July 1st We'd be trust fund. we'd be insuring ourselves and, and we'd yes we'd have our own and health insurance trust group fund. later is that the plan or am I hearing that or we would yes we would uh, be part of the goal would be to be part of a another a joint establish purchase a group new. establish a new a, a joint purchase group correct we'd be part of a joint purchase group a separate joint purchase group not Mayflower but a, a joint but purchase group are we negotiating or talking with any other groups that you're aware of other or? towns correct. And, for example, and uh, you know the towns or I know. See, I know several, but okay. I, I just don't know that. Okay. You know, you can. I'm sure you can appreciate that. Yep. And maybe. Motion to approve Article 10. Second. Motion to second. second. Any further discussion? All in favor? All right. Aye. Aye. Opposed. One. One opposed. Okay. Um, article 11. Uh, this is an annual article. I think it's changed different names, but it's. A new day, formerly a new day, uh, $5,000 donation for survivors of sexual assault and domestic violence. Motion to approve. I'll second, but I do have a question. Where, where would these funds come from? These are uh, raised and appropriated. I think we have it uh, as part of the plan, yes. Thank you. Okay, motion made and second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. Um, this is the article that we just. I uh, heard from the LaPointe family, um, granted non-exclusive 60-foot wide access and utility easement along the westerly sideline. Um, my understanding from the conversation is that this is basically the first step in a process that's going to take a while, but uh, sounds like a, a win for people that need some. Uh, well, that and we'll get $50,000 worth of repairs at the senior center. Well, yeah, but I mean, the biggest thing I think is that. Well, more um, if you negotiate that's right. <laughs> Don't negotiate. No pressure. <laughs> is there any further, is there any, well, I'll entertain a motion on this first. I'll make a motion to approve. I'll second it. Motion to be in a second. Further discussion? Yes. Yes. Um, as Andy pointed out, the easement going in front of the building, I know they're proposing to put a new entrance to the building yep. because of the, the closeness. There's 77 feet from the edge to the front door of that building. It doesn't look like there's much space there. Um, for that easement for that whole side of that what we call the front of the senior center right now 
if you look at the senior center. Right, it's 17 feet from the edge of the road to the edge of 70, the road. 17. 70, 70 feet from the fence. Uh, from the fence to the? Uh, 77 okay. feet from the fence to the uh, sidewalk of the senior center okay. entrance. And they look so, at the 60, 60, 60 foot wide. Yeah. 60 foot wide easement, but that doesn't mean there's going to be a fence at 60 feet. No. You know, it's still going to be wide open. And that's why they propose uh, moving the senior, uh, uh, moving the entrance to face the parking lot, okay. but they they would build a drop off at that the existing front entrance door. Okay, thank you. And there is an entrance at the back that they could utilize. Actually, there's entrances on the back side too. So there's, I mean, there's multiple entrances. Yeah. One other, one other. If I, yep. uh, correct me, uh, Alex. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, if if they don't get the permits they need to build this, then this easement goes away. Yes, that's how I understand it. Right. If, if, they if they don't get the permits or whatever necessary to build their senior housing, this easement thing goes away automatically? That's what they said, but I, again, I... Legally, I'm asking get, the question. Well, I think think when we so give this gets into law lawyerly business. Yeah, but I think that's an important question. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's, what that's why I thought yeah, I Yeah, so, asking. I mean, they it's can't decide not to do uh, senior housing and put in uh, market rate condos. Yeah. If, you, if we easement. grant this easement tonight, are we are we permanently allowing that easement to be well, there, or does it go away if this this deal, this exclusive deal, goes away? Well, again, keep in mind you're not granting anything tonight. Right. Um, if town right. meeting approves it, it would be the ultimately the selectmen would still have to. There, would the town meeting be would be document. allowing the selectmen to grant an easement. That's all town meeting would be doing, would be allowing the board to grant an easement. So We're suggesting the approval of that so that the town sees that the board of selectmen are approving the proposed yeah. proposal. And, and all the town's going to vote then the is, is voting all the all easement? Yeah. They're going to vote to allow us to sign a uh, yeah. legal right. document. So this, okay. this would, this would right. take some input from There's going to be a lot of uh, well, legalese yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, it might not be a bad idea if, if uh, in fact, if uh, the board members wish to forward any questions you have to me over the next couple of days, and I'll be in co in conjunction with any questions we have to town council, and we can try to get uh, uh, any issues, questions, le legalese in the works if you're interested uh, in starting to move it forward. Uh, and, you know, just so everyone knows, it's not that we don't trust the points, but something could happen and they could end up selling this to somebody else uh, this, uh, who decides not to do senior yeah. so i mean i totally trust the points i i think it's a great idea but the, the, town yeah, the definitely smart, has the to smart be. growth principles are nice but it's it's, it's the dot in the i's and crossing the t's are the right that's that's the important thing it's also, the, it's also the point that they could build it and run it for two years and then say you know what we're not making enough money and we want to, so we want that in writing that's yes. perpetuity. Uh, I think with the uh, uh, mass housing funding, they have to do it for so many years. years. They they can't accept the funding, and that's where they'd have to be getting the funding. They can't accept that, and then two years from now say, well, we don't want to do it anymore. Yeah, I'm sure there's getting those certain tax credits that he spoke yeah, about. Yeah, there, there's restrictions right. in there. Tom, did you have any? Did you have your hand raised a little bit? No. Oh, question. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. Do you, that's all right. right. I guess the question would be, do you want to wait on this until we get questions submitted to town council? We can always take a vote on this you can tonight at town meeting if, we, uh, if you feel more comfortable. Just I just, I just, you know, well, I, I just what I'm think. asking, Mike, what I'm asking you, because I expect all your experiences uh, from, from things I don't know about, is I was just concerned with the fact that when you, when, Again, I apologize. We're not granting an easement, but we're, we're proposing to accept the town voting to allow us to accept an easement. Mm -hmm. So my only question then became is, if an easement is granted, and then the condition that the easement was granted for doesn't come true, are we held and bound to that easement? That's, that's, my, only, yeah. that's my only question. Mm -hmm. well, I, I, this really, I agree with you, Alex. I'm, I have full trust with Mr. Right. Yeah. Point and the, Mr. Point's family. I appreciate everything they're proposing here. I'm just simply asking a question about easement law, and I don't know. So I, I will send you that, Rick. I don't know if we need to worry about that to make this approval or not, but I, I, I just think I'm asking a generic question that I just need That's an answer a very to. Very good question. Yeah. But we're granting the easement to uh, Edmonton Investment LLC, right? I mean, that's who we're granting it to. If, if I would think if something else changed, <coughs> then you're not granting it to. I mean, are they, well, can, and, and can they sell you're, an you're easement? Correct. Yeah. 
And is it permanent? I think I had asked this earlier if it's a permanent easement or. And that's what it, it's saying for age restricted. Yeah, so it says it, right there. Yeah, it says, it's right there. So if uh, they change that, then the easement would be no good, I would think. I would think too. Yeah. Town council. Uh, town council still has to write <laughs> yeah, it up. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. That's why I asked the question. Yeah. Right. No, I agree with no, you. Does no. the board want to act on oh, in, well. fan <coughs> in fairness, you know, um, having literally an hour. No, I know. We just got this tonight. To so, digest yeah. it is, you know. Actually, I wouldn't mind waiting until the night of town meeting if that's. Yeah, I, I think the question to town council is just how mm. um, how it would be worded. Thank you, Alex. If we do grant it. Yeah. And I think. And, and, and I we think may the, want that at town meeting. And the other thing is, it, you know, as far as moving the entrance and that, all that kind of stuff, I, you know, I guess that comes part. That's not part of this, but no, but it would have to be to another point, agreement. How, how do you get to that point where we can actually say we're not going to execute the easement unless you make this change? Because that's not in mm -hmm. here, so because I don't think you can do it without moving the entrance. So, what, we, what do we do? So, I get the sense yeah. that we're going to hold off on Article 12. That'd be the first article. Yeah, that we, we, yeah we can hold off yeah. on that till town meeting night. Article 13 is another easement. This you know more about this, Rick, than I do. Griffin's area. Yes, this is the one I started to speak of. This is a, um, <coughs> a slight change in the current easement that exists, a utility easement, uh, end grid easement that's um, actually uh, um, that en uh, encroaches on the Rock Rockland line. Um, uh, this is, I believe, it's about a basically a 20-foot change in the current easement that the town currently has uh, with that Engrid currently has with Abington and um, this has already been reviewed by town council um, it's really quite frankly it's immaterial other than the fact that uh, um, it is a slight change and, and, and therefore does require a reacceptance by the town so um, proposed yeah. approval of article 13 Second. Mr. Mayor, second for the discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Article 14 is to, uh, I'm not going to read this, obviously, it's to adopt the stretch energy code, which is pretty much the state code now, Propose, supposedly. Proposed, we accept Article 14. Second. Motion is made and second. Any further discussion? Article 14, stretch code. None. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. And we have a representative coming, right? To we, town meeting. we absolutely can. If we, we did ask we last week. And they, said they, they, they volunteered the gentleman didn't make the meeting. Okay. We'll, <laughs> we'll make yeah, exactly. Sure. And explained a lot better than we can. <laughs> yes, we'll make sure that we follow up on that and have somebody there. Uh, Article 15, and people in TV line would be glad to hear this. Vote to raise and appropriate some of $1 million to replace water mains. Um, by the water commission is and this is not like most water articles because it doesn't say with the like amount from rockland so i'm, I'm assuming and maybe rick knows this that these this are, is going to be abington these are just within abington and these amounts are already built into the rate structure as dan callahan has informed the finance committee already right so it's not on our tax base it's it's through water it's receipts. through your water rates it's in your water receipts and it's already built into your right. receipts oh uh, yes into your water rate motion to approve article 15. second what's the main second further discussion uh yeah further discussion yep. I'm, I'm sorry it's not going to show up on our tax rate but the the treasurer collector is authorized to borrow and the payment will be from the water department I'm sorry. On the debt? Uh, he, wrong. The treasurer collector would approve the Board of Selectmen authorized to borrow $1 million. Yes. Okay. So, but paid for, will the debt that we borrow $1 million be paid by the Water Department? Not. It's, the other, yeah, it's being paid for through the water receipts. Water receipts. Yes. Okay. Correct. Yes. Sure yes. Right. And it says to replace water mains. Just. Replacing all the water mains. Do we have a? Yeah, a, I, It doesn't say that we have a particular place. Yeah, Mr. Callahan would be the would would be is, uh, have the inventory been, on which what mains specifically right. would be part of this particular doing, replacement uh, program. Why so. the summit now? But I, I understand that, but it doesn't say it on here, so they don't have to do that. They just replace water mains. It's just a question. Yeah, I don't think they have to say which street they're doing. I mean, no, but it would be uh, nice if someone from the water department yeah, could. Speak well, Dan will be there, I'm okay, sure, yeah, that night. Sense. 
give it. Okay, they, they have an ongoing repl repl inventory replacement program that this applies to. I, you know, so I. <coughs> but this isn't Mr. An Callahan would have to speak. This is to not this. an article that comes up every year, though. It did last year. Yeah, it comes up. Oh. It's it's a fairly regular. Actually, I think you know. it was two million dollars last okay. year, wasn't it? I don't recall specifically, yeah. but this is this is a recurring request. Uh, I don't know how it's every did, year, but it's they did Temple recurring. Street, Wyman, and Summit with the, what we approved last year. Or they're doing that now. Article, did I do we take a vote on that? You did. Yeah, we, we did. did. Article 16 is. Tell me what that is, Rick. Capital projects authorized the borrowing. This yeah. is borrowing for the schools. And uh, yeah, this is. Um, <coughs> This is a um, request of the treasurer collector pursuant to the you pay off some loans early. The, uh, no, the Municipal Modernization Act, oh. which allows you to now, um, when you borrow, you can uh, you, with one vote now with a new project you can borrow and put the proceeds of all interest directly towards the pro, uh, towards that project this is a this is a this now this particular article is one vote that to allow the treasurer to retroactively do that to all outstanding borrows and again this is under the modern the municipal modernization act passed by the state uh, this past year this is kind of this vote encompasses all outstanding borrows by the town that allows the treasurer just to do that to everything that's outstanding but that's only the premium, Rick, right? Any premium that receive, that we received on the bonds. That's what it's Yes. That's what it states. Thank right? you. Thank I don't you, know Tom. if we I don't know if we received any other premiums but. on any of the stuff that we borrowed, so So it's kind of a it's a nice it's a and it, yes. Thank you. But at least it's uh, uh so now when it was a new project, um it can be voted once for and for all time, so um, never has to be done again. So motion to approve article sixteen. Second. <coughs> motion made and second. Any further discussion? All in favor. Aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. Article seventeen is by the treasurer collector. And this is just uh, yeah. Changing the bylaws, Rick? Uh, this is an update to the, uh, again, under the Municipal Modernization Act that allows, um, as you know, for, for many years now, the, um, the, light, the statute that allows you uh, boards and committees to withhold licenses for mm -hmm. non-payment of taxes and, and fees. Um, this actually reflects how boards in, in, uh, all throughout the Commonwealth actually work. Um, the, currently, the language basically says that the treasurer collector will issue a list once a year and and uh, to boards and committees. Well, this really this basically says that if you look down the below, um, um, that has neglected to refuse to pay any local taxes, fees, assessments, betterments. Um, um, it, it doesn't basically doesn't say that the treasurer collector will um, just issue a license uh, list once a year so this is an update to the law that really reflects how cities and towns actually do business <laughs> so the treasurer collector is is recommending that we also update our bylaw to reflect the what's allowed under the current modern municipal um, what's the language my I'm getting tongue-tied modern minis modern. thank you modern muni municipal oh, modernization modern. act so yeah. thank you Post the board accept article 17. Second. Thank you, Bob. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I was just going to let you keep going. Uh, yeah, thank you. Yeah. And second? I know who my friends are, Alex. I Motion made and second in article 17. <laughs> Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous vote. Article 18 is by the planning board. It's trying to retain some of the historic uh, aspects of homes, I believe. Is that correct? Do we do recall? I know Sir, what spoke yeah. about this. But yes. Creation of a historical child bylaw. Amend the bylaw to include a new definition of historical New England character. So the special permit granting authority may take into consideration the proposed exterior architectural appearance to ensure it generally conforms with the historical New England character of the town. Like basically, it. is what yeah. it's about. Proposed Article 18 support by the Board of Selectmen. 
second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Can you I'm staying on that one, please. Sure. So noted. Article 19 is um, a temporary moratorium on recreational marijuana. If we approve? Hot shops, I should call them. Second. Um, Article 19, motion made and second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? What a town. Unanimous. Recently, that just turned this down. temporary. I think it was a East Bridgeport. Hanson. Oh, uh, Hanson, exactly. Yes, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I was very surprised. <laughs> yeah. Article 20 <laughs> is by the Zoning <laughs> Board of <laughs> Appeals. Um, they spoke the other night on this uh, changing of a definition. Uh, it was a little confusing, but I think we got the understanding of it. Um, going to change the definition of apartment. Move we approve. Second. Motion is made and second. Any further discussion? Article 20. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous vote. 21, see if the town will vote to recommend the zoning bylaw. Um, this is about the tattoo piles and body piercing to make it a little um, a little bit easier, but yet not by. Is, yeah, it, it opens up another district. Yes. Right now it's just industrial district. This would open it up to the highway commercial mm -hmm. through a special permit. Proposal support Article 21. Okay. We have a second on Article 21. I have a tattoo, so I'll uh, I'll, I'll second that motion. Uh, any further discussion on Article 21? All in favor? That's really Aye. 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 Opposed to Article 21. One opposite. Okay, four one. Okay, Article 22. To raise uh, this is a Rick article. Um, raise an appropriate transfer from available funds to fund recently settled collective bargaining agreements that I don't know anything about. No. No, okay. That's, that's, that's just, but we'll keep it in there in case there's a miracle in the next two weeks. Well, it's posted. Yeah, that's that's exactly. Right. What, but I will be providing an update on um, all things, uh, either in writing or verbally, uh, at before or at the next meeting. With regard to collective bargaining. Twenty second or the meeting. Uh, just discussion. Yes. Um, which ones can we? Can you mention which ones we've settled? Well, yes. Okay. None. None. Okay. Yes, but that article is, is a st standing article, just in case things do get settled. Um, it's by by May twenty second. Yes. Okay. Yes, but again, that's as in the words of the chairman, in case a miracle happens. Okay. But like I said, I will be before the twenty on or before the twenty second, probably in writing. I'll probably I'll give the board an update as to where things stand. As you know, probably have heard. I'm sorry, Tom. I'm not sure you would have, but our uh, police uh, agree uh, uh, contract. We are in the uh, JLMC process at the moment, so that that, that will look likely take a lot longer than May twenty second. Although um, we do have some uh, ongoing discussions that we hope um, will move that along a little quicker than a regular JLMC process would go. So um, as, so of, as been, of just recently, so. That hasn't been settled in a while, right? Correct, correct. So. Is that the longest outstanding contract? Yes, okay. yes. <clears throat> um, public comment, anyone? <laughs> Well, I just had a comment. Is this Absolutely. is this on the website now? The uh, the warrant. Yeah, it will be tomorrow. Okay. Well, the the warrant is, but the, uh, what was posted today um, will be um, up there t tomorrow. Yeah, that was posted by the constable because the right. website just got in, came back this afternoon. It had been down, so now it's up now and running. It's on the, the it's on the website. Yes, the what the the. So if anybody wants to obtain a copy they can go on the website yes we'll, we'll come to town hall and get a hard copy yep. correct oh yeah yeah so, it will be up but it'll be up tomorrow morning okay right then yeah. and right if um after wednesday the the um finance committee um doesn't agree with our recommendations on different on our votes or could you just make us aware of it so that we prepare for our 22nd meeting um, certainly and we usually keep a short agenda for that meeting uh, now we obviously have a public hearing if, if that sure. pans through but other than that but then after that, we can have the next meeting. After that, we'll have a big. If anybody wants to throw stuff on the agenda, you know. sure. But I will let you know. Okay. And that meeting, the twenty-second, will be at the school, or will it be here? Uh, at the school. At the school. No, I, yes. I know the 
yeah. budget it, but our meeting will our be meeting that. will be there yeah. too. Yeah. 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 That's, that's right. right. Yeah. 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 That's what I thought. Yes. And and right um, I just a uh, reminder, if we could, um, I, I think I mentioned to both of you about the uh, Old Colony Planning Council with the Route 123. Um, um, the presentation. Yes. Yeah, if we I can heard. get that on June sometime. Yes. Yeah. Good idea. Because yeah, uh, I'm nice. curious to see what they have to say about Orange Street and mm -hmm. Washington Street there. Okay. And we'll meet. What time? Tell me to start at seven. 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 Well, it's six o'clock. All right, you think? To meet at. Uh, it's mm -hmm. Tough sure. to meet any earlier. So six o'clock yeah. at the high school. Okay. Good. Just to remind everybody again, town meeting is Monday, May twenty second. Twenty second. Yes. Seven o'clock at Abington High School. You had a chance to make that announcement at the beginning of the meeting. I know. You did. And it will be out. the last town <laughs> meeting at the high school. That's right. That's right. Next year we'll be in the probably the auditorium. Yeah. The new auditorium, yeah. 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 All right. Motion to close. Motion to adjourn. Uh, second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you.